Cheers. Sorry, I chit. It, no, cheers, my to dude. Apologize for chin chin. Chin chin. That's what the Italians say. Really? Yeah. Also, apparently in Japanese, it means tiny penis. Really? But I prefer the Italian. <laughs> What in Italian it means cheers? Cheers. Yeah. Chin chin. What's your connection to Italian culture where you know that? Or is Zero. It just like I just a, love the way it sounds. Okay. Chin chin. Chin chin. You know what I mean? Mark Rebier. How do you how do you pronounce your last name again? You did it. You knocked it out I of the park. I knocked it out of the park. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was telling you beforehand, I like was go- on like fifty different interviews yeah. with you trying to find one where the interviewer said your name. <laughs> yeah. So that I could be prepared. It's pretty much everybody fucks it up, but yeah. it's Rebier. You killed it. Is that French? Yeah, that's very French. Okay, are very you French? French? Do you go to... I am. Dual citizen. Oh. Half oh, French. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you, do you go to France often? Yeah, I do. Now I go, you know, when I play shows, I generally go once a year on, on tour, but I used to go all the time when I was a kid. I'd go to the, the south of France. I had a pen pal over there. A and pen pal? Yeah. How often could, do you write to your pen pal? Well, I don't write to him anymore, but we, we do stay in touch. Okay. He's a good dude. He lives in Canada now. He's one of those, like... Ex French transplants that lives in Canada now. Now, when you now, I assume your pen pal, you just text him now. Yeah, but yeah. when you text him, do you write it like a letter? <laughs> I write, I write a letter, and then I take a picture of it and I send it to him on WhatsApp. <laughs> that sounds efficient. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. It's not at all. I should probably just text the man. You know, Mark, what have you been thinking about lately? Oh Jesus, Lyle, man, I gotta tell you, dude. Please. Um, I might need to call in. I, mm-hmm. I've been very um, stressed oh, recently. Yeah? A lot of stress. I'm putting together this uh, studio in, in Brooklyn that I'm, I'm doing this project in that I'm really, really fucking pumped about. Mm-hmm. But what I didn't really take into account when I got this space was the fact that I would have to make decisions about every single part of it you know what i mean that Mm -hmm. like my idea was just like i had this idea and i was like i'll get this studio and we'll do this fun thing in there but then you start getting it together and you realize there's like a thousand tiny decisions that need to be made would you consider yourself a decisive man <laughs> that just, <laughs> ah! just I didn't way. know if you were, I didn't know if you were doing a bit just now. I was like, are you fucking with me or no, are we about to <laughs> No. It's an organic bit. Okay. <laughs> so no, I'm not. Oh, I'm not either. I'm not. I there are things I feel strongly about. Mm-hmm. I'm opinionated, I would okay. say. Opinionated. A yes. Bit. Decisive? No. I'm trying no. I'm really trying to think about what the difference is between opinionated and decisive. I feel like decisive is when you have the confidence to back up all of your opinions. Yeah. Because opinions, opinions way to word are it. free. Opinions, right. you just have them. Right. They, they are in your they brain. Don't, they don't necessarily like drive your life or the world in one direction or another. No, they are they just, thoughts. Are just thoughts. They're thoughts. I yeah. have very clear, defined thoughts about things yeah. that I'm willing to, to change, of course, but, but, but you know, instinct-wise, yes. I have strong opinions. Mm-hmm. Decisions, much more difficult for me. But you there's know. a I there's a feel like a very small gap between the opinions and the decisions, You're especially right. when it comes to like design. Like you obviously like okay, if you have a lot of opinions, I assume you have a lot of opinions about that's what true. the design of your place should look that's like. That's very true, and I and and I make those decisions pretty quickly. So I don't know. Now I'm second guessing. Maybe I am pretty. You're decisive. indecisive <laughs> about your own decisiveness. Holy shit! We just started, and we're already I therapy geckoing. I need real therapy. I think. <laughs> you, ever, you ever been to real therapy? Yeah, I have a couple times a couple okay. times and i would like to continue going but i have i have yet to find a therapist who really who i jive with okay. you know um do you have anything you you might be looking for in particular like when you think about someone who might be who might jive well with you no no i mean it's more just like a it's like a feeling isn't it yeah. i would hope that sure. like it's like i'm talking with this person and i feel like they genuinely even if they don't understand that they genuinely empathize and can have a back and forth with me in a way that feels natural sure. and that feels uh, helpful, I suppose. Um, and I just haven't found that. I've had a couple therapists, you know, for a couple weeks. Oh, sorry, what did you say? Oh, right. We forgot to go live on Reddit. Oh, oh we're such pieces hey, of shit. Reddit? No, <laughs> hey, shit, oh, we're not on Reddit. We're not. Yet. I forgot to go live on Reddit. Hey, Hold everybody, on. give us just a moment because we're about to go, to go live on Reddit. Reddit. That's it. 
You and I were both we're 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 children of children Reddit. of Reddit. We both started doing our shit on Reddit. That's right. I owe my pretty much my entire career to Reddit. Dude, I owe my entire career. Like it's like, true. Dead serious. Our videos are cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I owe my career to you, Reddit. All right, are we. I think we're on. We're on. Is, is anything else wrong? Are we all? We're good. Oh man, we, we are up it. and running. We're Key up and running. Ignition. Hello, Reddit. Hey Reddit, how Did you, you doing? Th- have you streamed on? You, you stream on our pan, right? Uh, I I didn't even. To be honest with you, I didn't know it was still happening. I thought it was really? like a, a social experiment that they did. That's how it started. Right, yeah. but it's still up. It started as like, hey, we're gonna do this for a month, and then I think they just kept it. And really, yeah. And my, I, like I said, my whole thing is I, that's where I started streaming and all fuck that, yeah, you know, that's so. awesome. Yeah, our pan was awesome. I mean, I remember it happened during the pandemic, didn't it? When it. it um, I think when they started it, when they yeah. when they started putting it up, yeah. and it was this thing where you would get on it and stream, and all of the it was it was kind of like TikTok in that it would propel someone yes. who was doing something like half interesting sure. from like five watchers to like fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, and it was just this insane audience that if you managed to get on while it was happening while yeah. the feature was enabled yeah then you could really like you could get some massive viewers no, that that was that was me I, I went on right after like there would be a guy filming chickens yeah yeah or something like something along those lines right. and there'd be fifty thousand people watching this guy <laughs> filming his chickens yeah and i would i would take some of the chicken attention <laughs> right. siphon it off into what i'm doing get the chickens over here get yeah the chicken people over yeah, here yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what I did too. I what I rely on my on the people who watch me to sort of alert me to this kind of stuff. So I would get a couple of DMs that were like, "Mark, our pan is live right now. You got to go on it." Mm-hmm. So I was like in the middle. I was like high and watching something. I was like, "I got to stop everything. I hook up my sound shit. I put my phone up here and I get on our pan." And it, I mean, yeah, it just like did incredible things for my viewership. So you know? so so you get high. You're a green guy. I'm a bit very much a green Do guy. Do you? Uh, do you get high while you stream and while you like work and stuff? I I'll tell you I get high occasionally while I stream. Okay. Um, because there's something about that that vibe in my at my, in my apartment. It helps. Does, it's would you nice. Say, would you say it definitely can? Okay. Yes. Yes, I think it does. Um, at shows, never. Mm. I made that mistake a couple of times oh, early in my fuck. touring life. What did that feel like, dude? It would. <laughs> I played the show in. Uh, is it cool if I put my gecko foot? You up can do here? whatever right? you, you. Then we look a little bit like a. You can a, like a leapfrog stance. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna get banned for this one, but you you go ahead. <laughs> is that all right? You no, please. Up there? Please. Oh, no, that's chilling. good. That's yeah. A nice you feel thing. comfortable? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. 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 I'll tell you this show in in Indianapolis. I did. Um, I think it was like maybe my first or second show touring show ever so i just started touring this was 2018 and uh and i get up on the stage and it's a really high energy room Mm -hmm. people are scree it's like a really good feeling in there really enjoying myself halfway through the show this guy in the front hands me a vape pen (laughs) and i'm like Yep. Fuck yeah, let's do it. You know, I Why take not? the vape pen, I take a little hit. Right. And the thing about the vape pens is you never really know how tight or loose like the draw yep. is going to be. You yep. know? And so I hit it, and <laughs> it was just this absurd hit. Mm-hmm. Absurd hit. Mm-hmm. I'm just a cloud. Yep. And all of a sudden, I realize that I'm standing on a stage, and there's hundreds of people expecting me to do Guide do something. Them. Yes. Yes. Right. And so my whole sh- I'm just, yep. and it was like a basically a mini panic attack. Um, I pulled through. I mean, finished the show, but it was horrible. It was just an awful thing. I feel like in order to do things like like what we're doing now and being on stage, like you yeah. you have to not be. Thinking about the fact that you are being watched. That's true, Because it's a very, like, you know, the flow state. Right. Uh, so you have to be, like, in the flow state. You can't be thinking 
too much about shit. That, that's why I, I don't get high when I do this because if I did, I'd be like, oh god, there's a, how many ever people? Yeah, you're watching too aware. Right now. You're, you're too, too aware. You got you start thinking about. But it's good when you're alone. Like when I'm on yes. stream alone, I tend to find that if there's no one else in the room, mm. it really does put me into an interesting place. I find I come up with cool stuff, but it just doesn't work when there's other people there. And you and you're you're on the spot and you have to like do something creatively. At least for me, I think it works for a lot of other people. A lot of the other people are happy to get high and yeah. do shit, but I just can't <laughs> reconcile it for some reason. I, you know, I've decided that this is the one stream where like I, I, I sometimes I just won't do anything. Sometimes I'll just sit in silence and I'll stare at the camera for really? a little bit if I if I if I need to. Hey, you want to take some calls? Yeah, let's do it. I'm very excited. Hmm. I'm very excited to talk to people. It's mm. been a while since I've talked to some lovely callers. Hello? Hello? Sarah from New York, 22 years old. How are you doing? I'm good. I just got from, back from class. How are you guys doing? Doing very well, Sarah. It's lovely to hear your voice. How was class? It was long, but um, I'm glad it's over. We had a lecture. Anything uh, interesting going on in that lecture? Um, it was a lecture about structures, and this guy named Felix Candela who was a very famous Spanish designer who made these ultra thin shell structures in Mexico. Did you find that interesting? I did. I really did. Good. Um, it, it had a lot to do with the project I'm working on for one of my other classes. Well, Sarah, I, it says here, speaking of class, that uh, you have a professor who you say is constantly oversharing about other teachers and staff. <laughs> They're gossiping around. They're talking about who is sleeping with whom. And you, you find this to be wildly inappropriate. Yeah. Do you want to tell us more about this? Yeah, so she's the professor that I'm doing this other project for. Um, and it's a very small school, so word gets around. Um, and essentially, when we kind of meet for class... We kind of start talking, and then she we break up into smaller groups, and she visits each one of us individually, and we kind of update her on our progress. And she always starts spinning wildly out of control, sharing about these professors, these elder faculty members that I've had previously, and telling us about things that they were said, you know, in private, like, just like... Ish, ish, ish. And my, I guess my question was... Go ahead, please. Okay. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go go right ahead. Oh, my question would be, in a professional relationship between a student and a professor, where she has kind of complete control over my success in this course and my ability to move on um, with my education, like, what is the best way to kind of handle this situation where it's like, I don't want to you know, ruin any opportunities that may, you know, come from this in the future, whether it be a job or a teaching position, but like it's making me uncomfortable. Sometimes she's talking about her own trauma with the pandemic or her childhood. Like, can I ask you, is, is she uh, an influential professor for you? In other words, you know, would she, are you worried that if, if, if you were to sort of say anything about this or ruffle some feathers that, y you know, that she would be able to impact your career in the future in some way? I would say so. It, it's a small profession in the way that, like, a lot of these faculty members are practitioners in the field and they speak to each other, you know, casually over drinks or so on. Um, and at a small school, like the school I go to... Um, very frequently, like students are obviously discussed over like you know drinks after after class that day with between the faculty. So it, it's concerning in the way that I don't want to like seem 
unreceptive. Sarah, what 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 is own, like, what is the wildest thing that this teacher has told you? I'm dying to know. Um, so I think she was a refugee from a war in the in Eastern Europe, and oh. a story she told me. Um, that's a lot different from like oh, I, thought, I, 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 I thought it was like gossip about like who's, who's sleeping with who. I didn't know it was like the, your a story about being a yeah, refugee. No, go go horrible ahead. Horrible war like, story. Right, right. That, that, I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, I it's like an insane like variety of things that she talks about. Oh. It, it feels as if she doesn't really have any personal friends to kind of like have as an outlet, and she kind of mm. dumps it on students, but like kind of like more of the saucy stuff is like I don't really feel comfortable discussing. Mm. Uh, okay, have you told her that you don't feel comfortable discussing this stuff with her? No, I'm just afraid to, I guess. What do the other students think? I, I mean, you know, how students kind of, like, joke on their own. Like, it's it's kind of like she's notorious for this, and, like, it's not. I'm not the only person that it's happened to, and so you kind of make jokes about it, like, oh, did you hear what she said this day or whatever. Mm. So do you feel like you're but having more no of a problem with it than they it. are? Can you repeat that? Do you feel like you're having more of a problem with it than the other students are? It seems like it, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe I think so. I don't know. That's a tough predicament, you know? I don't know what I would do in that situation because, like, you should not, in an academic environment, feel uncomfortable, particularly mm -hmm. with someone who's, like, your superior, who's supposed to be teaching you. That's mm -hmm. not a... You should not feel that way in that kind of dynamic. That's not good. Um, yeah. At the same time... Okay, but, but hold on, though, because... I don't think, no. <laughs> Here's what it is. I wouldn't give a shit mm -hmm. about this person's ability to affect your career in the future. That is less, mm -hmm. uh, I just feel like that's less a concern than this person saying some really outrageous shit to their students that they really shouldn't be saying as a teacher. You know what I mean? Like, that. Mm -hmm. That's that's an issue, and... You could not only help solve that for yourself, but also for future classes. Like maybe she doesn't True. even know that what she's saying is True. so out there. She could there. be not aware yeah. of, of the fact that she is making yeah. people uncomfortable. Right. I mean, maybe she just needs to be educated. <laughs> School. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I, I do just have to kind of bring it up to her and ask if she's aware. I think that's the way to go. It's mm -hmm. like you don't have to go through the whole school system and make a big fuss about it. But maybe personally to her, you never know. She might be, um, I mean, she might be grateful. She might be like, man, I didn't know that right. I was oversharing or that right. be making people uncomfortable. Right. Or, she mm -hmm. might not even realize. Yeah. That's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Sarah, uh, I mean, what do you think you'll do moving forward? Well, I'll see her on Thursday, and I think, um, oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I guess I should just bring it up to her in a, in a private and a, and a casual method and and ask if she needs maybe an outlet in a different manner. Maybe she needs Approaching the situation with, with some genuine kindness. I like, I like this. I like 100%. this. 100%. I think that's the way to go. And also, <laughs> I would try and remember that this is not, you know— I know it's going to be nerve wracking to approach her. Obviously, that's a weird thing. It's a weird situation. But I would try and remember that it's not that big a deal. It's mm -hmm. someone leveling with someone else. Student, mm. teacher, employee, but right. whatever. You're just saying, hey, this is a little weird for me. Human to human. You know, I just wanted to let you know. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't. It's not that big a deal. You know, she needs to know. She mm -hmm. needs to know. Mm hmm. Sarah, is there anything else you want to yeah. say to uh, me, Mark, or the people at the computer before we go? Not really. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you very much for calling, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Good night. Night, night. Don't you dare let the bed bugs bite, okay? See, maybe this is just me. But if, and uh, to each their own, everyone has their own level of comfort with other stuff, but yeah. like, 
I, and maybe this is just by nature of what I do here, but I'm always honored when people open up to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say something about bed bugs. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't I don't think I have anything at all to say about bed bugs. We fuck them, really. <laughs> fuck them. Don't let them bite, pretty much. But I. Uh, but when people open up. Yeah, that, I, yeah. I feel like. I feel. I, I don't know. I'm just like. It's a weird experience. I agree. I feel like an obligation to really listen and support and try and work through it in whatever sure. stupid way we, we yeah. can. Yeah. You know, it's. It feels. I feel immediately like there's like a. Some sort of. Um, uh, Burden is the wrong word. It's like a obligation. That's even uh, still the duty. 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 There's a duty bestowed on us the yes. second someone opens up like that. Right. Right. Where you, you know feel what? like you have to. Be. And and yeah. You know, by the, Sarah, I have a lot of respect for her because she clearly has high moral standards. Because a lot of people, it's true. probably me included, would also be like, damn, what's the tea? <laughs> I know. Like, I'm, not... I'm just like, I would be like sitting oh, there like, shit. please tell me more about <laughs> yeah. which professor is sleeping with her. Uh, just for like, but she she would rather hear about the, the, the Spanish architect. That's so, what she paid to go to school to hear about. So I respect her for that. She's but an it actual student. Yeah. Self-respecting student. Yeah. Not something I know anything about. Were you, uh, what was oh, your school Oh, God, thing? I dropped out. I went to college for acting for a year, and then oh. I dropped out. So okay. That was, that was it. <laughs> How was the year? Did you learn anything that you currently use in your regular life? Well, uh, you, you know, no. <laughs> no. But I did... Um, I did make some of my best friends there. Okay, so that's that, helpful. That's definitely a big takeaway. That's you know? helpful. Are you in any uh, debt? No, I paid it all off. Uh, well, my parents paid off like half of it, and then nice. I paid off the rest. Nice. And uh, I should reimburse my mom for that now. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice. A nice little Christmas present. It's nice to think about things. Are you Are you actually going to do it? I certainly could. I, I mean, like I, thinking about like nice things that yeah, I could do, but then never, and then never do because you, because <laughs> the be great nice. the good feeling because you know how like you do something nice and you get a yeah. good feeling you can just get that feeling by just, just saying that about just it. thinking about it you know I should uh, <laughs> yeah yeah I should really donate to UNICEF yeah that'd be mm. nice anyway I need whiskey no <laughs> let's see what's going on in the queue here Bethany from Ohio Bethany from Ohio yeah. What's up? Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Mark, Loud can you and hear clear. Bethany from I, Ohio. I've never been able to hear you better, Bethany. It's true. Being connected together on the phone has increased our ability to hear one another more than before. <laughs> I we feel were on like the this phone. is more of a human interaction than I have with most people. Bethany, uh, Bethany, can I read here what it says on the computer? It says here that you've been doing tarot readings as a job for five years, um, but your boyfriend slash baby daddy is not supportive of you. Says he makes enough money to support both of you guys, but you want your own independence. Is this is this accurate? Yeah. Mm. Basically, um, me and my boyfriend have been together like nine years. And um, we have a child together, and I've been interested in tarot for five years, and I want to, because all my friends really think I'm good at it, and I really thoroughly enjoy it, like, a lot. So it's something I really want to do, and my boyfriend's just really against it. He just doesn't like tarot. He thinks um, what? All that kind of stuff is silly. What doesn't he like about it? Has he expressed to you what he doesn't like? Oh. Um, he just doesn't believe in it, I guess. You know, here's my like, thing. I understand, and I get it. Here's, here's the thing. is like, look, it's one thing if your boyfriend doesn't believe in it. But it's another thing if he, because like, whatever, he, he can't force himself to believe in anything. But it's another thing if he's consistently right. going out of his way to be a dick about it. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have to believe in it, but he could still support your uh, shit. He could support you believing in it. Yeah. And that's what I think. So it's like basically, do I make myself happy or do I make my boyfriend happy? Mm. Um, and we've been together nine years, like I said. Is is that where it's at right now? Or, I mean, are you between 
those two choices? Do you feel like it's it's teeter tottering like that? Well, you know, I feel like I'm a stay at home mom with our daughter right now, and I'm just very aware of how depressed I can get, oh. and I feel like I need some sort of career or I need something to make me feel happy outside of being a mom. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like I need something. And this is something I really love, you know, and I wanted to get into like sewing and clothes making, but that's really hard with a uh, toddler. Yeah. You know, like learning that stuff and doing that. Tarot, I already know it. Like I can do that with her around. Like it's something that's like really easy for me to do. And that's something I love. I think not only do you need something like that, you deserve something like that. Everyone should have something in their life, uh, you know, outside of whatever their familial responsibilities or their home life that brings them joy, brings them pleasure. Mm -hmm. If tarot is that for you, you should absolutely pursue it, um, regardless of what this joker thinks about it. Excuse my language. <laughs> oh, um, but, you know, oh, come on. Is he, um, well, so can I, I ask, I well, about oh, Bethany, real quick, can I ask, I, can I ask, Bethany, when, when your boyfriend is, when you say he's not supportive of you, what kind of, like, language is he using? Is he, is he, like, telling you to stop? Is he, like, saying, Hey, cut that shit out because you got to take care of our kid. Like, I, like, how is he approaching? Because, like I said, it's one thing if he doesn't believe in it, like you know, whatever. But it's a totally other thing if he's like trying to get you to stop yeah. or, or or control what you're doing. Right. He's literally, like, like he doesn't want me. Like, so I want to make like money from okay. this, and you can make like. Thirty dollars for fifteen minutes or fifty for thirty minutes. Like you can really set the price at whatever you want. I'm not trying to like. He says it's like ripping people off. I'm not like. I'm the type of person that if you like call me with a tarot reading, like I'm not gonna try to rip you off. I'm gonna try to help you, like similar to what you do, but like with tarot. And it's like, I he just. I'm sorry. I'm getting lost in my words. I'm nervous too. No, but, it's okay. Um, I just feel like he doesn't. I feel like he's like doesn't want me to talk about it around him. He doesn't want me to do it around him. Like, if I do it, he tells me that, like, that's not important. That's and I some, don't need to be doing that. Man, that's some shitty, belittling you know energy right there. That's some, um... I don't like that. I just don't like that. I don't like that, um... <laughs> Dude, it's something... It doesn't matter what it is. It could be tarot, it could be astrophysics. It's making you happy, and it's something I you know, want to pursue. And like, he, sh- I, I, I know it doesn't seem real. It doesn't matter, but that's not even the point. Right, is that point. if he loves you and he cares about your happiness, and this is one of the things that brings you that happiness, he should be supportive of that. He shouldn't be belittling it or telling you that it's stupid. That's just really not a nice thing to do to someone. See, if you really love someone, you will just. I'm really like cry. feel so nice. you can just feel really deeply in your heart that their hobby is stupid but then never but never let it leave the heart it's it just is a it's like a kindness thing dude yeah. and it's like a love thing like he i just feel like it's you should not feel small for doing something that brings you joy you should feel good about that and the fact that he doesn't, that he's like actively working against that is just kind of sucks. And I'm, I'm sorry that you're, that you're dealing with that. That's, that's a poopy thing. You know what I mean? We don't want a poopy thing. Thank you. Here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer for See, it. Yeah. This is, you know, relationship stuff is always hard because I'm never going to tell anybody, uh, you know, what to do with the big decisions right. in your life. But yeah. I, I I think Mark and I both agree. This is not cool behavior. It's definitely not. You know, I mean, you should be empowered to do whatever the fuck it is that you want to do and not be following the whim of, you know, this guy. Yeah, I agree. I I just, you know, it's it's a tough thing to reconcile. It's like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't really, I hesitate to give you any 
sort of thoughts beyond that because mm. then it feels like I'm trying to give you like advice which I'm not qualified to give. I feel mm. like it's just I just want you to know that I don't like the way that that makes me feel and I'm sure you don't like the way that it makes you feel either. Mm-hmm. How do you, what do you think about everything that uh, yeah. that we've been saying, Bethany? I just, like, don't know really, like, what to do from here. Like, I'm not going to – I don't want to break up with him. Like, that's not – I just want to be able to be happy. So, Have like, you – um, I'll, I'll, I'll say this much. Have you told him directly how it makes you feel when he talks to you like this? Oh, yeah. Like, he – it's just – it's like basically so like he knows so it's basically like i have to go ahead and do what i need to do and like do what i want to do but like it's going to be understood that i'm not going to get support from him and he's going to be upset about it okay so he's he's like like, like, yeah go ahead stupid shit like i can do it but he's going to be an asshole right like anytime i bring it up or like like, if I'm like, hey, have you watched the beat, like, for a second so I can, like, do this, he's not probably going to be supportive of it. So it's, like, it's basically just, like, picking myself. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I would be like, yo, this is, this is serious. Even though you think it's a joke or stupid, the way, you know, I like tarot, I like doing it, it makes me feel good. And I really need you to, like, not treat it as though it's stupid just for me. You know, because yeah, I, I, he should you got you really got to tell him that if he's not willing to do that, then I think that speaks to something pretty fundamental that might need some some work. You know, I don't know. But but he, right. sh- no, he should be right. able to yeah, meet definitely. you there. He should be, you know, uh, uh, Bethany, look, I, I, you know. I, I hope I hope at the end of the day you do whatever is best for your own personal likewise personal happiness and like like we said we, we we're not gonna tell you what to do but I just w- hope I, I just hope you think really hard about what will make you happy and really consider all your different options you deserve it and you I deserve I think you it. deserve it and I hope you pick the right one. Definitely, and I really, really appreciate your time tonight and your niceness and honesty. Thank you. Of course, Bethany. Have a good rest of the night. Have a lovely night, Bethany. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Fuck. God damn. We are on some some heavy heavy shit tonight, No, It's really hard. It's super hard because, like. I Uh, love this. This I'm I'm at home right here. Good, good. Dude, shit like that is so hard because. Obviously, everybody listening and everybody in the chat wants to tell this person fucking break up with your boyfriend, <laughs> and I want to I want to tell fucking break up with it, but it's I like, know. but I but deep in my heart, I'm like, f- I'm a gecko guy on the internet. I've known this person for ten minutes, and they yeah, told me what, what it is. Is you know, it's so much more subtle than that. It's like it's not the like as a comment, you could be like, fuck that dude, get the fuck out. Right, you but know, then but, it's like, but I can't just be like, fuck that dude, get, make a major, I can't just be like, make a major life decision. Exactly. All right, bye, I gotta keep going with my stream. It's so much more subtle. This is life we're talking about. Yeah. She lives with this dude. Yeah. She probably loves him very much. Yeah. They have a whole thing together. They've yeah. had a whole thing for years, probably. I feel so bad for her, and I feel bad for anybody who's like, and do we get we get calls like this all the time, and like, I see people just mm. in real life like this all the time who like, they're in some kind of relationship that's like defining them. Oh yeah, and it's yeah. it's so painful to see. That is tough, man. It's tough because, you know, and that's why it's another reason why I hesitated to give, um, a, to give like concrete advice to sure, her is yeah. because I I have not been in a serious relationship in almost ten years now. Me either, dude. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yo, hey, by the way. Chin chin. chin chin. <laughs> Forgot about that. that good callback. Chin chin to that, my dude. Um, life is easier this way. I'll tell you guys that right now. Yeah. But at the same time, a relationship can bring you an enormous amount of support of and course. joy and comfort and, and, and love. It's stuff that 
obviously everyone needs and wants, yeah. you know? And so I would never judge someone for being in a relationship, even if it's, even if it's one that is going through something, you know, if they're going through something difficult, right. I just, maybe this is a rough patch. Maybe it can be worked out. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a way to work through it. That's why you always try that before just saying, fuck this piece of well, shit. That's why know? That's why we were trying to be like, okay, have you like expressed to him it, all your right. feelings? And then she said, yes, I did. And that he, I didn't like. That I didn't like. I and didn't she was like, like yes, I did. And he was like, ah. <laughs> I, yeah. She said, no. she didn't just say yes. She was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah. I've God, tried I to feel, express I, it. I, I feel bad for that. I really hope. I wish I could like send her some sort of... Um, energy blast of uh whatever awareness or confidence to yeah. make the the right decision i do too but, man i do too it sounds like if the dude isn't gonna give her that it's such a simple thing to be like yeah man do your thing love i i love you what, for that what do you think real, real quick i think this is the thing i think about a lot on the stream like yeah. what do you should i try to be like pretty neutral and i think to my sometimes i do like tell people what to do unconsciously and i forget mm. about it but I, lately i've been having it more in my head like don't tell people what to do just talk through it uh. but sometimes i'm like should i tell people what to, should should we have did we have some sort of duty to be like break up with your boyfriend but then i also weigh that That's against the whole thing like that we were just talking about of like right she's living with this fucking it's so much easier said than done we're doing a little i mean twitch stream thing i'm we're just gonna yeah. drop a fucking life decision on her <laughs> right well i i mean i don't know man I, it's it's possible that both are true, that, like, yeah. it depends on the severity of the thing. You know, it sounds like this is not, like, well, I mean, it's certainly a kind of abuse. It's a kind of abuse. Sure. It's a kind of, like, psychological abuse. For of like sure. What agree. you're doing is small and stupid, uh-huh. and I don't respect it, and if you need time away to do that thing, I'm going to make a stink about it, yeah. and I'm going to make you feel small. And that's shitty. That's mm-hmm. shitty behavior. It's my instinct is to say, get rid of that piece of shit. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we don't. We don't. Know. We don't have all the context. We don't have all the context. I don't know. Both are true. I. You. you <sighs> maybe we're right. Hey, there's a guy here who who drinks milk too much. Maybe we, maybe we, maybe we, maybe oh, we'll yeah. let's do that one. Oh, I love. Yeah, let's get milk guy, milk man. Hello, Riley. Yeah. How are you, Riley? Uh, I'm good. Uh, Riley, it says here that uh, you're 21 years old and that you consume uh, a lot of milk, like five cartons of milk uh, for lunch, a.m. and p.m. First of all, how big are these cartons? I mean, it's just like the carton of milk that you'd get like in high school. But like I'm in college now and there's like a buffet and like... (laughs) I put that shit in my pocket and like <laughs> walk away with it. Are these? Is it like a pint? You talking about? No, you're talking about the little, um, like the box cartons that like they look like an old school carton of milk, but they're like small sort of cubes. Is that what you're talking about? Right, 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 right. And so, okay. And so, d- tell us your diet. Tell us throughout a- a- any given day, like today, what was your milk diet? I mean, like, well, like, today was, like, I didn't have school, so, like, I, like, splurged a little bit and got, like, a quart of chocolate milk on top of, like, the normal amount of milk that I drink. It was more than more than usual when you're not in school. So, does the, how much of the milk is chocolate? That's right. what I was kind of, because I didn't, I didn't, I feel like the, the, the type of milk is a factor here. Right. Well, like, chocolate milk, like, I... Usually it's just like two percent milk, but like on on like I don't know. Sometimes when I'm just like feeling the mood, I like splurge and get some chocolate milk. So like today, it's not very often. It's like probably like once a week for chocolate. Mm. Do you, do you, this feels pretty often. To what's me. what's your what's your thing on strawberry milk? Ah, uh, nah, nah, man, you can't catch me. Fuck, that shit. No, fuck no. strawberry That's milk, the right? right? Answer by uh? the way. Yeah, I don't fuck with strawberry milk at all. I don't know who's out there drinking it. Dirty garbage, Dirty as far garbage. as I'm concerned. You know. Uh, all right, so tell us. Um, exactly. All right, so so 
let's see. Mark asked you what your diet was like, and and were you asking him his, his milk diet or just his overall? Like, what's because uh, I'm also a little bit curious what's going on around the milk. Yeah, that's true. And 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 also, do you consider it to be like has it caused any sort of physical issues? Yeah, so, you know, that's question. a lot of milk to be putting in one body. Right. Well, like I I usually like plan out with the, specifically the cartons. Like it's like a buffet that I go to, and on campus and like I, I get food and then I drink three cartons of milk with that and then when I go back for dessert I grab two other cartons of milk and drink it with the dessert what does it do to you what's the feeling oh man it, I mean it's not good like when I was like in like kindergarten or first grade I was told I was lactose sensitive and like if I were to continue like I'll be lactose intolerant and like I shit a lot so like <laughs> I'm worried I might actually be lactose intolerant, so, like, I don't know. Jesus. Have you been to a doctor <laughs> about this? Uh, yeah, and, and, and they're usually, what is, like, uh, going to yeah, back man. and see what it does from there. But, like, it's so good. Okay, okay but, so, okay, explain to us the, the, t- t- talk us through the it's so good thing. You know what I mean? What t- talk us through the sweet process of ingesting milk for you? Tell us about that. Well, I like my friends make fun of me because like I have like milk theory. I have a theory that men uh, enjoy milk more than women because like I like my my female friends like get mad at me when I drink milk for like mm. anything. Mm. Suckling from mother's teat, perhaps. Mm. Mm. That could be right. Right, mm. like I don't, I don't want to dip mm. into like Freud, but like yeah. he may have been onto something, you know. Riley, what is your relationship like with your mother? Oh, great! It's good. It's healthy. You love each other. Did right. you yeah. did you breastfeed a lot as a child? Uh, I've been told I was breastfed, but I, I don't, I don't know. How. I don't think I was cons- obviously consuming the amount that I am today. Can I just say you didn't answer the question about medical issues as a result of the milk? Have you as, has anything happened? I mean, do you is it what, what what is there any cause for concern here? Or is it just a personal concern that you're drinking too much milk? Uh, I think it's like both. I think like people like my friends think it's like a moral concern physically like. I just get like really bad cramps and like have to go to the bathroom a lot. Hold on, did you say moral concern? The cow thing, right? right. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask, what's the moral or what's the moral concern? Like, uh, like it's bad for the for the animals? That's that's what I would guess. Well, like I don't I don't know that they're like just like really concerned about like like I, I I'm interested in like I kind of want to drink like exotic milk. Like I went on a on a on a rant one night about like the benefits of drinking water buffalo milk. <laughs> yeah, Good. Do you want you want to give us the, the 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 thesis of the rant? Give us the skinny on that. I mean, like, so I looked into it and like water buffalo buff, uh, water buffalo milk is like the best milk that you can drink, like nutrition wise. Uh, this is about to turn into the Joe Rogan experience. Have you sampled it? No, I looked into it, and, like, the nearest place that you can get water buffalo milk in the United States is Pennsylvania. Wow. Now, what is but it about... But two-day shipping, so I think what, that's cool. What is it about water buffalo milk that is so nutritious from what you've, from what you've uh, researched? Uh, I don't really remember, like, the details. I know, I think it's, like, a little thinner than, like, normal milk, so, I mean, mm. it goes down a little easier. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so water buffalo milk, and w- what, are there any other types of exotic milks that you are passionate about that we should know about? Breast? Uh, you know, I've heard uh, goat milk is the closest to breast milk, and I, I really don't want to try that. You don't, you, you don't like the thought of trying human breast milk? Nah. Okay, so it's not about the, it's not like a fetish thing. It's just a, 
it, now, but, okay, but here's where I'm a little bit confused is that you say that it makes you feel, it makes your stomach feel weird and it makes you shit a lot. So then where is the pleasure part of this? Right. Or is it a masochistic mm, exercise? Mm, mm. Is it a self-harm thing? You know what I mean? Where, where, where's the pleasure in it for you? That's a good question. A- uh, I don't know. It's just like, I don't, I don't drink like pop or like coffee or anything like that. I, I strictly drink like water and milk. And like, if I'm not feeling water, then I just go to milk. So maybe it's just like my drink palate isn't really like, uh, I don't, I don't have like a huge drink palate. Maybe that's it. But like, I don't know. It's like some days it just feels, uh, really good to wash down some food with 2% milk. But, I mean, this, we both, we all know this is not a sustainable practice. Eventually, your body is going to react violently. It, if not already doing so. Do you have any right. plans to, to wean off of milk? Because you're, you're only heading towards greater hell. Uh, you know, I was hoping maybe, like, maybe getting water buffalo milk, I'll drink it, and I, I don't like it, and maybe that'll like make me like be like, oh, I don't, mm. I don't want milk no more. You just have to feed your curiosity. That's what it is. Right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm just, uh, it's, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to see where the pleasure part is. It's not, obviously there's pleasure in washing down, so I love washing down a nice cookie, a fine yeah. Chocolate cookie, yeah, yeah, with a little bit of two percent milk. I agree with There's that. nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But all day, you know, it just feels like a bizarre. It's not just an alternative to water. I think yeah. for you, it's it feels like it's it's more of an obsession. It's a little bit more of sort of a comfort. I, yeah, I don't know, but it sounds like you're totally fine with it, and that it's not presenting any serious medical problems. So I, I don't really know if. Asking you to stop is, I don't think it really matters. It, you know, it sounds like, it sounds to me like you're going to push it until uh, until you can't anymore, <laughs> Riley. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think that's what a lot of my friends think. Uh, my friend uh, actually wanted me to, to call in about this situation, hoping that maybe uh, a gecko on the computer would get through to me. But, like, after talking to you, like, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Stop drinking the fucking milk, I, Riley. I, I, I second that. If that's uh, your your friends sound like they were about to host some sort of intervention for you. Yeah. Hey, Riley. Damn, Riley, uh, you, you there? I think about that. You listening? Yeah. Stop drinking so yeah. much goddamn milk. Okay, cut it out. It's bizarre. It's a bizarre habit. I think you can drink a healthy amount, but it sounds like it's a little out of control. And you should maybe try and replace some of the milk. I don't know. Water. Um, you know, goji, berry. Ju- I don't know. What I, I don't know why I would, I, I, I would be more concerned. I'm more concerned about the milk than if he was like, I'm drinking like two co- cans of Coke a day or something. Oh, like yeah. That. That's he, I, Even though the Coke's probably worse, I feel like the milk. That's true. The milk is... is is it's rubbing just me bizarre. the wrong way. It's just bizarre. But listen, Riley, um, thank you very much for calling and sharing. We wish you the best of luck in uh, all your future endeavors. Is there anything else that you want to say to uh, two geckos or to the rest of the computer before we go? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the, the intervention. Um, I'm just going to let my friends know online I will try to be better about my milk consumption. Hey, we're rooting for you. That's the spirit. You got this, my man. Take care, Riley. See, if if you're calling in about uh, a toxic relationship, no direct advice. But milk? Milk? Milk, we will tell you what's what. Oh, we're coming. We're coming for you. You know what? I, that conversation brought up something that I, I, I never thought about before in my life. Can you buy human breast milk? Oh, yeah, man. They're um. Well, actually, you know, I don't know if it was a like um an art project or something but there yeah. was this website where you could buy like aristocratic like white women's breast milk really yeah and and it was like a fetish thing hmm. um but i don't know if it exists anymore and it's maybe some people in the chat know what i'm talking about but it was um yeah it was like a it was just a bizarre 
and I think it is a thing. It is a thing. It, it has to be because there's no way they could make that illegal because no. if you're, you know, an adult woman and you make the conscious decision to sell your breast milk, you right. should be allowed to. And I, then if you're, you an adult, if you're a person and you want to buy breast milk, right. you should be allowed to. You should be allowed to. Is it weird? It it is. Has it? I, there has to have been at least one person, one startup somewhere that tried <laughs> to get a, a brand, like a legitimate brand, going. I think that's of exactly human breast milk what I'm talking about. To I go think... into grocery stores. Oh god. <laughs> There whole has to have, there had to have happened at some point. Whole Foods, it's about as whole as it gets. <laughs> whole food, two percent. It's not two percent. It's a hundred percent mother's milk. Yeah, that's right. Someone said, "Mark, I had a flamingo themed birthday party in your honor." Is there a? Do you have wow. a flamingo thing? I have. A, I made up a flamingo song at 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 one of my drive-in shows during the pandemic in okay. in twenty twenty, and uh, it 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 made the rounds, I guess, and. Um, yeah, flamingo. It was just about a flamingo that like kills people and eats your your children and your grandmother's eats your grandmother's pussy. You did. <laughs> like uh, you did. You did the drive-in shows. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I heard that the drive with comedy. I heard that the drive-in shows they honk to laugh. Yes. Now what do they do with music? Do we they also were the, honk? We were the first ones on the road to do that, and then we got um, it. W- well, I mean, it wasn't my idea. It was my agent's idea. But yeah. they. Uh, but yeah, they put me out on the road, um, and. It was like we did honking and we did, uh, you know, windshield wipers and shit. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, basically just people just pulled up to a parking lot and mm-hmm. I was in the back with like a green screen and cameras. And then they projected the show onto the drive-in theater screen. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was fun. I mean, it was it was fun. It was a weird yeah. run of shows. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cool to be like participating in this weird part of history in, in that way. Yeah, dude. You know? I mean, it was yeah, it was fun. People were. I mean, there hadn't been shows in in months at that point, yeah. and um, it was a nice way to connect with people in real life without like you know jeopardizing health too much. Well, it's a good thing that the pandemic is completely over. It's gone. It's done. I don't even know what that word means. Mm-hmm. And uh, no more coronavirus. That's it. It's been everyone's defeated, cured, and we ev- the world is a hundred percent back to normal. We did it. We won. We did it, everybody. It's over. Let's see what's going on in the queue here. <laughs> Doesn't exist. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, honestly, it, it's I keep my sanity by thinking that because it's it's exhausting. It's just exhausting. Hmm. We got anyone interesting on the line? Yeah, tell me. Uh, t- I'm I'm looking around here. Let's see. Mm. Ooh, just got a date with a girl Hasn't dated since middle school Let's talk to Jay Jay Hi Jay <laughs> Jay knew that we were gonna pick on him Before he even What's up Jay, how you doing man? Hey man Hey Am I J- on? Jay just coming right on th- with it With the intro coming right in Jay Jay, what's, uh, what's, what's crack a lacking with you? Um, I mean, sorry, there was a bit of delay. Um, right, no I'm just chilling, watching the stream. I really thought that Riley guy was my own friend because he's obsessed with milk. Um, Jay, it says here you're 21 years old. Uh, you just got a date with a girl and you haven't been on a date since middle school and you want to get some general yes. date ideas. Is that... Now, when you say date ideas, yeah. are you are you asking us about like date etiquette or like actual like ideas of things to do on a date? Hmm. I guess a little bit of both. Like, I kind of have an idea. Um, both her and I, we go to our local art school, so I was thinking like, oh, we could go to a gallery. Um, she can't eat pork, so I'm right now looking at restaurants that could accommodate her diet. Are you like, are you, you excited, know, Jay? Calories, are you nervous? Are you excited? Dinner, tell us how you tell us how you're feeling. Hold on a second. Tell me. Tell us about what's in your stomach. Yeah. You excited? Um, what's in my stomach? Yeah. How are you feeling about it? You get nervous? I'm. I'm really excited. Um, <laughs> like, I haven't <laughs> I haven't dated since middle school, as you guys can tell, and I've been a very nervous person. I've had oh. a few bad like friendships, so it's made me very kind of like it is. 
I love with, like, it. Like kind of opening myself up to people, but like mm. she's been super nice. She's kind of just let me go off the walls, talk about stuff I like, and I, I really like her. I, even oh, if we don't end up dating. Yeah. Like, so I I want I want to ask her. you, uh, Jay, is there a reason in particular? why you feel like you haven't been on a date since since middle school have you not been out there searching have you been focusing on other things has it just not lined up for you like what what could you peg that to it's a little it's a kind of like i've been both very closed off and like i'm trans so and the school i went to it was very much so like small queer community there mm -hmm. it was kind of awkward um i just didn't really like not a lot of people seem to have showed interest in me i didn't really show any interest in anyone there i just kind of like kept my head down and just wanted to focus on schoolwork really and yeah man it sounds like she digs you and it sounds like you got this shit in the bag yeah it sounds like like um I it it's I love hearing you talk about how you're feeling about the date because it's really sweet yeah. and and genuine yeah. and I just know it's gonna be a great date. It doesn't matter what you guys do, honestly. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Go to a gallery. Honestly, go to a little yeah. cafe. Don't overthink it. You know what I mean? It's you're gonna you you're just. It sounds like you already have a little connection. So. Just go yeah. to any place where that's allowed to flourish, where you can sure. talk to yep. each other, yep. and uh, and you're just gonna have the time of your goddamn life. I'm just really don't happy. go to a movie. Yeah. Oh no, definitely don't do that. That's, oh yeah, no. It's a tempting <laughs> thing to do because you don't actually have to like interact with each other. <laughs> but don't do that. Do something where you have to interact with each other and look at each other in the eyes, because that's some special shit. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, I'm I'm just very excited for you. You're gonna be you're about to have a great date. It sounds like yeah, because you know you asked us if we had date ideas, but then hot off the bat, you came you came to us with a currently existing good date idea. Excellent, great idea. And I don't idea. know if you were calling us for uh uh what's the word uh confirmation encouragement encouragement on your currently yeah. existing plans, but. But you 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 have our you have our uh, validation. Our, oh, you have our validation on your currently existing plans. If that's what you were, what you were searching for, I agree. It sounds like the chemistry is so there. Much, and Bye. as Mark said, uh, just finding a place for it to continue to flourish. Yeah. Yeah, like I guess I really just wanted to know, like, since I haven't tried or dated in a very long time, like I was worried, like, oh, am I being a bit too like jumping in? Head first or something. Jump in, like, oh, jump here, right here. on in. Here's baby. another get the, thing. Get your fuck on. Jump on in there and get it done. Here, here's another thing with the overthinking thing is like, with where you where you're like, oh, am I being too much this? Am I being too much that? Even if you are, whatever you are, whatever you are being, mm. that is you. And it is not up to other people. To, I mean, look, some people are not going to fuck with you. Some people are not going to fuck with your style. Right. Some people are. Some people may think you are too much. Some people may think you are too little. But it doesn't matter because you're not trying to mold your thing to be their thing. You're trying to see if this person jibes with your thing. With so don't even overthink thing. about it. Yeah, don't that's even a great point. It, you know what I'm saying? It's a great point. Be yourself. Yeah. Be nervous. Be excited. They are too. And uh, you just had to know that you're 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 both nervous and excited, and that's what makes a fun day, you know. Before we go, where'd you meet this person, <laughs> Jay? Um, where did we meet? Yeah, like how did you how did you find out about each we other's met existence? On Tinder. <laughs> oh, nice. we actually share like a a close friend with each other, which like I feel like if we didn't even meet on Tinder, we could have we could have probably met at like one of our. His friends like he does these indie movie showing things, so we probably would have met there. Hey, that's ah. uh, date number two, right in the bag. There it is. There you go. Let's go to our mutual friends indie <laughs> movie night. I love it, man. You got a cool life. I like. I like. I like what's going on with you, Jay. I, I wish I could be you for like just one day. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, Jay, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer or to uh, uh, to two geckos, to to Mark, to Lyle, to 
my father or to Mark's father or to <laughs> um, any 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 anyone or anything. I in just particular. wanna say I just wanna say thank you so much guys for um talking to me and like letting me know that go for it. Uh to Gex father, you raised the great echo. That's very sweet of you to say. Thank you, Jay. You have a good rest of the night. You too, guys. Night night. Don't let the bed bugs bite, okay? So I can't help it. Don't so let when, the bed bugs bite. When's, when's, uh, when's the last time you went on a date? Oh, my God. Um, two two days ago. Oh, how'd it go? It was great. Oh, yeah? It was great. It was a blast. I, I enjoy dates. I go yeah. on quite... That I feel I feel uh, confident to, to talk about. Mm. I love dates. I love um, getting to know new people. Mm-hmm. Um Finding out about them and their quirks and their little subtleties and fun mm-hmm. shit and mm-hmm. you know just fun. You get to you you sort of get to find out just who a new person is and um, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't. It's mm-hmm. no no harm, no foul either way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I had a really good date a couple of days ago. So uh, we've established we're both been perpetually single people. That's right. What and we, we can get as much into this or out of this as you as you want. Please. I can get into my thing too. What? Why? Why do you think that is? Because you, you say you like going on dates, but oh, but you've been single for ten years. Uh, yeah, I do think about that. Um, and you know, it's an interesting. I think it's an interesting thing to think about because sure. we have this. It's a. I would say it's a traditional societal idea yeah that perhaps has gone more and more out of style maybe as as the years have gone on re- very recently that you know everyone needs to find their one person mm-hmm. and they need to be so spectacular mm-hmm. that it stops everything else and you yeah. are with that person for the rest of your days uh-huh. and there is a very romantic notion around that you yeah. know i think it's I would like to find someone I think eventually I I don't even know if that's my like sort of childhood romanticism talking mm-hmm. um, but I I think I would like to find someone permanently eventually maybe I don't even know if that's true though I will say this I find great joy fulfillment and satisfaction in um, getting to know Different women with wonderful lives, sure. varied experiences, sure. and takes, and um, histories, sure. and and qualities, and um, I I know them for a little bit, and sometimes I stay in sure. touch with them, sure. and sometimes, but I don't know if um, I I don't know if I'm really looking if I really feel like I want anything yeah. beyond those sorts of yeah burst relationships they're yeah. like very quick relationships yeah, that are yeah and i enjoy that yeah um man i feel like we got a similar thing going. really yeah I, I would i i identify with a lot, a lot of what you're saying right now interesting uh, what did you tell me about your take i mean very it. similar to what kind of what you're saying but i always feel like i'm weird because like because i because as you're saying there's a societal thing of like yeah. you know you're supposed to be with this with like you're supposed to find one person and be with them, but right. I just all I hear are like horror stories, like like uh uh fuck what's the name of the girl that we were talking Tara. to, uh Bethany. Bethany. Like I hear stuff like that, and I'm yep. like fuck, I don't want to be like, like, what's the thing where like you think someone is great, you enjoy their company, yeah, you you you're attracted to them, like things go, but you you just like want to live your own life and you want to respect them and their ability to live their own life as well i mean I, like what's what's what is that there's got to be a word it's probably a word in german for it. the germans have a word for everything they do have a word for it's everything. probably a word for it but yeah that would be great i mean i would love to eventually end on some sort of thing like that where i have someone who i consider a best friend you sure. know one of my best friends sure but the sex is also great and mm-hmm. we love each other you know mm-hmm. it's like sort of a I would love to find something like that. Right. I haven't really found anything permanently like that. And it doesn't hurt me that I haven't either, though. That's the thing. It's not like I don't feel like something's missing. Um, but I, I'm i open to that happening in the future. Yeah. But I don't feel like I'm on this quest to find that. What I've found yeah. is that some of the women who I've been with who are also of the same mind as me, who enjoy sort of being with people in bursts. Um, 
that's the, just sort of it. So right, that's the key. You got to find somebody who thinks about these things the, right. sa- the similar way that you think about these things. So those people exist. They do exist. And also, I I will say that it's not everybody. Like sure. there are people who I have hurt because you know their expectations were different than my expectations. Sure, sure. And I've had to lay that out on the table. We've had to lay that out on the table. Sure. And I I hope that I've left those situations amicably sure. by being honest sure. and communicative. Sure. Yeah, but it's okay. not for everybody. Yeah. It's not for everybody. And I understand that. Um, you know. So And you know, you mentioned about being on this quest. And there, and uh, like look, like, dude, we, That's get call, we, feels... we get calls about this all the time. Like yeah. anyone who's like on a who who like is on a quest, they're like, I'm looking for another person quest to completely for love. I'm like, like it's the, it's this. I mean, this is why I tell every single caller who who is like, you know, hey, I can't find a girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. Is like, well, then just you know, focus on your own thing and yes. then other people will come but like oh, when you chase dude. finding the other half like that's when your shit just gets fucked and you become dependent on another person yo one you know? of my one of my very best friends um i won't say her name out of just privacy but she um was dating a dude who maybe wasn't the best suited to her sure. um but he gave her love and time and respect and that was great, but she was on this really transformative sort of journey of her own where she was really learning a lot about herself, still is, therapy, doing beautiful, like, really, like, huge things for herself, yeah. figuring herself out, had a lot of trauma in her past, mm-hmm. dealing with it, working through it, becoming a better person for it. And this dude was not necessarily on that journey with her. And so at the end of the day... You know, it didn't work out because they ended up in different places. She was, you know, she had grown. He maybe had not so much. Yeah. Um, And so it's just sort of this thing of like, yeah, I like to find people who are in a who are in a similar place that I am at that time. Yeah. I like connecting with them. Sure. And then if we go our separate ways, great. I wish you the best. Mm -hmm. I love you. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your life. If we stay in touch, great. I'd love to see you in the future. Mm-hmm. But it's, I'm very loose with it. You're I there guess. for the moment. I'm loose. Appreciating the moment. Yeah. Loose. The moment's all we got. I'm a loose little slut of a boy. The moment's all we got. Uh, nothing's ever guaranteed. Tomorrow doesn't exist. Live it up, baby. Enjoy yourself. Do things that make you happy. How are you feeling, Mark? I'm feeling when when the jazz is on. I feel like I'm uh, playing The Sims again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I'm just putting a little house together mm-hmm. in 2002. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you feel, do you feel like over you're, here? Yeah. I really have to pee. Oh, you can go pee. You can go pee right now. Really? Yeah. Can uh, I, yeah, I take pee breaks during. Oh, the you do? Now. Yeah. Yeah, you can go pee. I'll talk to you. Oh, man, let me do that. You go up here. Uh, you go pee, and then when you get back, I'll go pee. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Ready, break. I'll see you guys soon. I'm gonna go pee. I'm gonna have a nice pee pee. And take all, my take all the time you want. Penis needs to take a pee pee. Oh, leak. Uh, drain the lizard, as they say. Nice. Uh, I want to stretch. I'm going to stretch real quick. Hey, shout out to freaking Mark, 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 Mark R. For coming on the stream, dude. He's been great. Love having him in here. I always love doing the guest shows, man. They're always a lot of fucking fun. What's his name? I think it's Mark Ratatouille. Mark, uh... Mark McRib. Mark, uh... What's the state? Is there any... Are there any states that start with the letter R? Rhode Island. That's the only one, right? I can't think of another one. That was a good call, Leo. I couldn't think of one. That would have been here forever. Rexus. Rarkansas. Ralabama. Routh. Routh, Dakota. That's how Scooby-Doo says South Dakota. Oh, hey, while we were... I feel like we're sort of... um. We're sort of at a little break point here. Is there anything that you want to promote? Anything you want to tell the people oh, about? Oh, wow. We um, can do it now, and then we'll do it again at the end. Sure. Little, 
Yeah. Um, well, tomorrow, there's two things, really. Tomorrow I have uh, a new episode of the show that I've been doing called... Uh, <laughs> that's nice. Um, it's a show called We've Got Company. Um, it's uh, produced by Amazon Music and iHeart Comics, and it's on tomorrow on Twitch, on the Amazon Music Twitch channel, um, I believe at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So exactly when this stream started. It oh. will be starting tomorrow at that time. Special guest Dylan Francis. We're going to be making music together, shooting the shit, um, and playing games um, in uh, sort of a sitcom basement kind of set. And um, it's filmed by a bunch of professional people. Hell and yeah. it looks good and sounds good. So uh, I'm excited to do that. And then... Uh, I will say this for whoever happens to be watching right now who happens to have any clue who I am and is interested in what I'm doing. I'm not announcing this yet. I'm announcing it Thursday, but whoever's here right now, I'll announce it. I'm making an album. Yes. Uh, I'm making my first full-length album. Yes. And not only that, but I'm making it uh, in a new studio space that I have. Um, and I'm inviting a small group of people to each one of these studio sessions. Ah! You're going to be able to enter, get in, ah! join me at this studio, ah! 12 dates. It's happening starting April 22nd, um, and we're going to film and live stream each one of these studio sessions. Really great producer is coming to produce the record with me. And you'll basically be able to enter and sit in on um, or watch because it's live stream. These full studio sessions. We're talking like six hour streams, six hour show. And at the end of each of these sessions, a full song will be made. I'll come in with a couple ideas. We'll write, compose and record a full song at each one of these like shows. Um, Dude, that's crazy. So is this like a is this like a improvised album in a way i guess in a way really what it is is like you'll just be able to watch an entire album be made um like from scratch and so yeah i'll come in with a couple of small ideas and then over the course of this full studio session we'll flesh out a full song maybe a couple full songs and um at the end of these 12 sessions i hope to have at least 12 fully fully fleshed out tracks that will make up an LP, my first LP. You'll have watched it be made, written, recorded with whoever else comes and joins me and helps me write it and record it. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty Dude, pumped about it. That's crazy. That's like if I were, like, editing a movie and having people, like, watching me while I was doing right. it, I'd be like... That's the, <laughs> that's the whole point for me is that I've been trying to make an album for, like, years now and have never been able to really do it and so my thought is, how do I you force have people, myself? If you have people watching you, I now have you to have do to it. make the exactly. album. Exactly. <laughs> I'm forcing myself to make an album. That's sadistic. It is. And I'm pumped about it. I'm pumped about torturing myself into making it. Or is this Brooklyn where this Brooklyn. is all happening? Is this a new place Brooklyn. in Brooklyn? Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, It's a man. studio in Gowanus. Uh, and... Um, I've been building it out for the last like month or two. That's why you have not seen me online. I've been just really working on this as well as the Amazon show. But um, I'm, I'm really excited to announce it. Don't say too much, guys. Whoever's in here watching it, just enjoy that information and get ready for the announcement Thursday. And uh, you'll be able to apply to be invited on Friday. Um, Beautiful. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped about I got, it. I'll, when's, when's your Twitch show happening? I'll raid you. That's tomorrow. That's to, okay, I'm not streaming tomorrow. Oh, shit. Yeah, well, yeah, it's tomorrow. Next time. Uh, every it, other it's Wednesday. Every other, okay, great. I stream yeah. on Wednesday. I'll, I'll raid you guys next oh, time. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, so next, next, next Wednesday. Yeah. So that's it. Dude, that's a that's an ambitious idea. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I, I, I've never heard of anyone doing anything like that. Yeah, I think it's a first. I think it's a first, at least in this way of, like, which is one of the things that attracted me to it because what, what the, the idea that I got it from was I was super high and watching the um, Beatles documentary. Mm. You know that Beatles? The, uh, I've heard. I know it's on Disney Get Plus. Back. I got I to gotta, I gotta watch it. Dude, it's fucking incredible. Um, it's really amazing. But I was watching it and I was like just watching these people 
makes something yeah. in and of itself is entertaining. You yeah, know, like, so you're like, I want to have people watch me make shit because I'm getting entertained by other people watching shit, so I know for a fact right. that it can be entertaining to it, watch people do this there shit. Could be, it could potentially be entertaining. Yes. And and I really do want to make an album, but I haven't been able to. I haven't been able to get myself there. Yeah. So if I can turn it into a sort of show, then maybe I can finally get it done. Interesting. So that's the idea. All right, I might, I might have to, I might steal that in some way, shape, or form. I'm trying, oh, to, th- feel I'm trying free. to, I'm trying to think of something that I w- have always wanted to do. Where I'm like, okay, how do I get myself to do it? If I just like, I'll have to think of something. Yeah, like, maybe it's like, something. maybe it's like make a movie or some that's shit. That's exactly the and idea. It's like I'll just live stream myself on Premiere, editing, whatever the <laughs> fuck yeah. it is. No, you got to do the whole shit. You got to live stream the whole thing. Have some. You know, someone with a camera that's there, you know, it's just, you're going to be, it's like a fly on the wall yeah. experience. But then basically. all of my, we were talking about decisiveness, all of my indecisiveness and all of my weird working shit that I'm yeah. just like fucking weird about is, I then goes on display. Yeah, but I think that's exactly what people want to see. Uh, people love. They want to see me make a decision, go, no, I don't like that. They then w- have it go back. Yes. And then go, wait, no, I don't like that. Let's go back. That Yes. They want to see that. I think so. I think so. I think imperfection and indecisiveness and uh, flaws yes. are now what people want to watch. Fully agree with you. I think pe- I think there's too much. Everything is very well, cr- like, uh, everything Perfection. is in a nice little bow. It's overrated. It's, it's overrated. People it's overrated. do. They want to see the flaws. They want to see the muck because they want to know that they're not alone because everyone, all they ever see is the perfect, pristine, finished Dude, product. that's why, yeah, that's why, like, I mean, any you could point to any number of streaming successes yeah. that are incredibly popular for a reason because it's like you just see someone uncut yeah. for a length of time. Mm-hmm. It's not edited. It's not pared down. Um, I think we will do that eventually. It's like we're going to stream them, but then once – like you can catch it when it's live, but once it's done, we archive it, and then we'll edit it into its own thing. So you'll have the album. You'll have the streams. You'll have the edited version of the whole making of it, mm. and then if it's any good, um, I'll tour on the album. And so that'll be a new thing for me too, touring on an actual – Touring an actual – so you'll actually know the songs that you'll you're, right. you're touring and not just like – Improvising shit. Not just making it up. Yeah. That'd be exciting for you. I think it would be for at least one tour, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, it's a lot of new shit. So I am I just want you all to know that I'm working hard at, on it, um, and, and I really hope you like it. Uh, and if not, that's 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 my fault, um, and I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> but I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. Let's see what we got going on in here. Yeah, that's it. That's basically it. Interesting stuff. Uh, oh, this is this is this is. I got I got to know what's going on here. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh my god! Uh, Kelsey. Kelsey. Hello. Uh, Kelsey from Pennsylvania, twenty three years old. What's going on? How are you, Mark? How are you? Yeah, I'm doing very well. I'm having a nice little evening. I'm enjoying myself. How are you, Lo? I'm having a nice little evening, enjoying myself too. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, I'm. Um, I'm having a fun time. It's fun. It's good to be alive. You want to pour me a little bit of that. Oh, please, of course. Hit me with a little bit of that, right? Yes, there? yes, yes. Quick, quick. Yeah, that's that? it. Yeah, yeah. No, you want any more? You want any more? Over, you know. Well, maybe just a, a taste. Maybe a go. taste. That's perfect. That's it. Beautiful. Chin, chin, my chin, man. Chin, chin, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. Kelsey. Are you still there? Hello. Kelsey, it <laughs> yeah. says here that you are, uh, How 20, are you? 23 from Pennsylvania. We already went over that part. <laughs> it says that your boy it says that your boyfriend left you for your grandpa and that your boyfriend's you 20 are correct. It says your boyfriend's 25 and your grandpa's 72. Yep. Kelsey, please God tell us this story. So my boyfriend was cheating on me for a while and wasn't home. Come to find out he was seeing my grandfather. Get the fuck out of here. And I think that's how I got chlamydia. Oh, my God. You got chlamydia from your own grandfather? 
I guess so. Get if the that's f- how it works these what? days. What? Okay, wait. How- <laughs> Tell us how they yeah. give us the story of the meeting of the grandfather. And did you sense any weird chemistry there? Tell us get please. Yeah, there's so many details that so we are missing. How I found out was I got chlamydia and I'm not cheating on my boyfriend. <laughs> so I did some big deeping and he was been texting this person and seeing him, which was my grandfather. Wait, you saw texts? I did. What What did they text. say? And well, one, it was saved under his grandfather's name. So I thought nothing of it. Oh. Wait, <laughs> he saved the texts under his grandfather's name. Also, I would have thought yeah, something it of it. Grandpa sort of Jimmy. Oh my god! Can you tell us what the text said? Well, it was about the nights they were having, um, sleeping over, having work late when it wasn't actually work. You know. Oh my god! And dude. that Kelsey has chlamydia. <laughs> So, Kelsey, Kelsey, tell us, have you spoken to your grandfather about this? No, it's a whole family affair, honestly. What? Oh, it sounds wait, like Wait, 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 so affair. where is it at? What's the current status? I think they're still together. I, it happened, like, two months ago. What? Um, you... They're living it up over there. What? So Wait. you are you not connected to the situation at all? Do you? Yeah. Wh- wh- what's your grandfather's no, place anymore. in the whole family at hierarchy? At first, they asked me if I wanted a relationship with them. Oh my god! Wait, what do you mean a relationship with them? Like a throuple. Are you? Hold on. Hold, me? Hold, on hold on. Hold on. Kelsey. All Kelsey. Right. Kelsey. Kelsey. Please. And I won't. I, I swear to God, I'm not gonna be mad at you. I swear to God, I, pr- I, I promise you that I will not be mad at you. Okay? Do you understand me? I, pro- I promise you I will not be mad at you. Are yeah. You, are, you, are, you, are you fucking with us right now? No, I swear to God. I would not make that up. I'm single right now. Dude, okay. Hold on a second. Okay. So so your boyfriend started fucking, <laughs> started fucking your grandfather is now with yep. <laughs> him... And how did that sit- situation get resolved? Like, or rather, not resolved, but confronted in any way? Like, w- 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 explain to us the-, the sequence of events there. Honestly, that- I confronted my boyfriend at the time, and he denied it and was trying to say they were doing other things and trying to surprise me with weird things. Oh That's why I disliked him, but God. then I got chlamydia. Dude, I that wow. wow. What was your relationship like with your grandfather before this happened? Very good question. We were pretty close. Oh I mean, my. close enough for my boyfriend to get to know him, I guess. Oh no, my! Were you playing chess? Back in? Yeah, it was crazy. Oh God, dude. It's okay. a good story to tell now, you know. What I want to just say, I'm, I know I'm reacting with a, like incredible shock. I apologize. It's just, it's such an intensely unusual th- thing. Oh, no. right. No apology oh, necessary. Yeah. It's it is very definitely unusual. worthy what about of my a grandma? strong reaction. Your grandma? Are they married? They, they are. I mean, they're not actually together now, but they were married for I think 22 years. Did they? Are they not together because of this? Yep. What the fuck? That is right. Dude. Uh, this is an insane, insane sequence of events. Yeah, I never found out if she got chlamydia or not. I'm sure she did. I'm sure she did get it. Probably. <laughs> okay. Wait. Now, hold on. We have to be sensitive here, though, too, because as... <laughs> I mean, this is something out of, like, an absurdist comedy, but... This is also your life. I I imagine this was oh, it's like a comedy now at this point. Oh, it is okay. Have you gotten is like you've gotten past the pain part or the tr- trauma part because this is like a 
It can only be so painful, you know, when someone's, when your boyfriend's gay, you just have to move forward. Wait, yeah, but it's <laughs> way beyond wait, that. Wait, wait. It's I way feel beyond like this your... is about more than your boyfriend being gay. Way more than that. Way more than that. Yeah. Oh. And it being my I grandfather. I feel like that's sort of an afterthought at this point. <laughs> I would put that lower in the priority list of things uh, to be thinking about in this situation. Kelsey. So, uh, so, so, Kelsey, so, all right. Uh, well, tell me about your, tell me about the reactions of other people in your family. Your mom. I don't know if you have any siblings or, uh, you know, what, what, what is, what is, what is the talk of the town and the other members of the family? Well, my mom said she wasn't surprised due to her <laughs> father's behaviors in the past, apparently. He, he, he did. He, um, he's done things like this in the past? my dad wanted to kick both of their asses. Well, hold on. Okay, so your mom said that she wasn't surprised because he's done things like this in the past? Apparently. Like, wow. like what? Do you have any examples of anything? I have no clue. <laughs> oh. Okay, so wait. So it sounds like once this happened... You became somewhat disconnected in a in, in in a sense. Was that your doing, your choice? Tell us about where the because you it sounds like you're like, I yeah, have I nothing to do with that, this anymore. I was like, fuck you. You know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean I don't blame you. I mean, you. how would you react? I have no earthly idea. I have no earthly idea. I mean exactly. I just What's get it's just such an insane situation. <laughs> Tell us about your grandma. Are you close with her? Have you, yeah. have, you, have, you, have you been checking in on her at all? A little bit. She's just done with the whole family, you know. She's living on her own, <laughs> living her life. She's she like, I'm on. over this bullshit. It's, this it's shit. interesting. <laughs> what a champ, man. What a fucking champ. Least. By the way, you too. Mm -hmm. What a fucking champ. Mm -hmm. Uh, and your grandma too for Thank for you. putting up and then also I I do have to say on the other side of this we have to be empathetic to all sides. For sure. Love clearly was found there in this very bizarre <laughs> yeah th uh, way. I was wondering if I should bring that up. I was like, I'm almost. Am I weirdly happy for the boyfriend? To sc I mean, I know he cheated. I guess that's bad. But am I weirdly happy that he found? He 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 found out who he was. Maybe happy is the wrong happy word. Happy is but not the wrong. But I mean, well, look, well, look the situation. Okay, and this could sound crazy. Yeah, the situation kind of worked <laughs> out for everybody because look, well, because well, look, you yeah, don't, you don't want to be with it. Well, because you don't want to be with somebody who ultimately is you know uh, hiding something about themselves right. that would make fucking that my grandfather. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be with someone who's fucking your grandfather. You don't really. want to be with someone who's fucking your grandfather. And your boyfriend wants to be with your grandfather, so maybe everyone's kind of... Maybe this was good. Was this good? Am I crazy? <laughs> I mean... Is this a good thing? Could it I maybe... Know. It's a good story. It's a great story. No, questionably a good story. Should it maybe have never... Like, would it have been better for everyone if it had never and happened at all? Your boyfriend and your grandfather sort probably. of met in a, ba in a likely. vacuum? Likely. It's likely probably better if it had never happened at all. But... I have to say, you are awesome for taking. You clearly have uh, you you have a, a healthy relationship with what has happened. Yes. You're you're looking at it with. You know, go you ahead. Gotta do what you got to do besides the chlamydia? You know what I mean. You take those pills. You get take that pill pills. on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're working on it. Take the pills. Take what the are you pills. talking about? Go to the go to your fucking PCP. We were talking about chlamydia on the stream last I've night. I've had it. Lyle's had it. Yeah, we, and we've when we're cure. It's a curable illness. Just take a pill. That's I've it. had it twice. Take Sim a pill. It's very I simple. I could probably go viral with this story, huh? You got to go get that pill. It's very easy. It's a. It's like a regimen. It's a little antibiotic regimen. Go do it. Oh, you've had it before. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why the enthusiasm I, that you answered that with just made me I laugh. most certainly have. <laughs> and you just take some pills, and then you're good, okay? I'm just reading the comments. I'm sorry. People are saying some good things. What? Tell me what the people are saying. What are the people saying? Are they, are they comforting you? Or Normalize they... chlamydia. Normalize Did it. Did Grandpa steal one of the mom's boyfriend's kill? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> huh. That would be Ooh, great wait, revenge. Wait, because remember, because the mom was saying like he does this type of thing. Oh right. I feel like maybe when your mom was like whatever, fucking like uh, in college or something. Yeah. Like the, maybe the same thing happened oh, to her, man. where like her boyfriend was stolen by her dad. Maybe he has a history of doing this kind of stuff. What what's up with Someone this guy? Do you have his so number? Get him on the phone. Married, her boyfriend would, would become a step grandpa. If Grandpa could call in, yeah. this would be the most incredible sequence of events. Is there any way to make that happen? Hey, or even boyfriend, grandma. Do you ha- do you have his? Do, wait, actually, can I ask you? Can I ask you, Jenny, Do you have your grandmother's phone oh, number? Yeah. Would you be willing to dial her in? It's I okay. Do. I not- think she's asleep now, though. Oh shit! Mm. That's right. She's on grandma time. Someone said, if you can't keep it in the pants, keep it in the family. <laughs> can we, by the way, can we figure this out real quick? If your boyfriend and your gran- and your grandfather did get <laughs> married, what what would the ti- what would you call what would your boyfriend's title be? Step grandfather, your father. <laughs> oh my step god! Grandfather. Step grandfather. Step so grandfather. This, this is my step granddad. And my ex. Jesus, what mental. Just a jungle gym to be climbing through here. I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine how. Honestly, I'm. I have. I just have to say because I know it must have fucked you up, and I'm sorry for that. That's that. That must have been a real fucker to hear or to see, right? Oh, Kelsey. Kelsey's not oh, Kelsey, here anymore. Oh, Kelsey, what the fuck? What happened? Kelsey, let oh, us go? Kelsey left. Oh, Kelsey left. Hold on, let's bring her back out. I feel event. like this was an accident. Or, I uh, just, I, I'm just, I can't imagine what a, f- what a fucker of a thing that must have been to see. Like, your your boyfriend's text messages with your grandfather. Yeah, Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey dropped. I don't she's know if out. It was an accident, but um, uh, she might have got. Yeah, she, she's maybe gone, she got but, a cover blown or something. But uh, yeah, Kelsey, no, that is damn, a total dude. that is a total fucker. Uh very crazy stuff. Kelsey I, did seem like she was um no, you you you've been very sensitive to this issue. I feel like uh it's it's true. Kelsey did seem like she was handling it very well. Super well. I mean Super it, well. I mean here's the here's the problem. She had like a good attitude about it. I don't it. know if it's I don't know if it's a problem, but here's the thing, whatever yeah. it is. It's undeniably a a pretty Crazy, comedically pretty funny it's story. It's a funny it's circumstance. It's an undeniably funny story. Hundred percent. It's a comedically and, and I appreciate so heavily that Casey is aware of that. Hundred percent. Yep. Agreed. It, it's Agreed. Un- undeniable is the only way. It cannot be denied. She's a fucking champ. She's a fucking champ. She's a champ. Just like dealing with it in a way that is healthy and good. You know, she knows or she should know, Kelsey, yeah. if you're listening, it's not about you, obviously. Has nothing to do with you. It has to do with some strange, perhaps beautiful love between two men of differing ages. And uh, who am I to judge that? Really? You know what I was thinking about is because uh, I was I brought up real quick. I was like, is this a good thing mm. for everyone? Uh, like if I'm, let's say I'm the boyfriend. Yeah. And um, I'm gay, and I'm not telling. Okay, I'm trying to think of like what's the ethical way to like. Because you feel what you feel, and you, there's nothing wrong with you know feeling how you feel. Like, sure. what's the what's the ethical way to be like? Hey, I'm going to break up with you. Yeah. To date your grandpa, because cheating is different from being like I'm going to leave you. Yeah, I don't know if there's what's the any... ethical way to do that. Does it that even exist? I feel like there's no like good way to go about. What's it. the proper communication involved I to set like that you, up? If you're it the boyfriend, had to be a cheating situation. Like, there's no way that could have <laughs> happened in like a formal way. Hey, Kelsey, you know, listen. <laughs> no, so we had a great run. He's hot. He's hot <laughs> as fuck. What do you think if I... Uh, there's no good, healthy way to go. You just have to, like, do it and then deal with the repercussions, you know? You, get, <laughs> you can't just, like... Yeah. <laughs> Take those dentures out and get the, give me that give me those gummies. You can't. That's probably a unique sexual experience that I. I'm sure. If I, had, in... if I had to like get in his mind and be like, why would I, you know, be be into you know, my that... the, my girlfriend's grandfather? Right. Maybe maybe it's the gums thing. 
it's a gums thing or it's a uh, geriatrics it's a, maybe a geriatrics thing or it's a family thing maybe it's a family fetish where it's like he's fucking people you know it's like um uh, or it's he likes just to get a, all in in the family. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or, or or it could be just like a sexual discovery thing. He might be having a real revelation. Hey, you know? Know, this is a good. T- what What does geriatric mean? It means uh, elderly. It means like a seen, old. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. even, I had no. I couldn't even like vaguely yeah. describe what it meant before you told me just now. <laughs> it's I, but a I've fun used it before. Medical way of saying old. Ah. geriatrics. It's like a, the um, having to do with elderly medicine and elderly people yeah. well i wish yeah. casey the best of luck in whatever comes next i don't know what i don't know what your dating life is supposed to look like after this casey i think i know exactly what's coming next and um well for your boyfriend at least and i wish him the very best um with your grandfather at the very least the bar for whoever she dates next is, is extremely low that's what you know what we should wish Kelsey the best. Yes, of course. Is that what you said? Kelsey. Kelsey's the girlfriend. Yes. Who we just I wish to. her the best. I wish her the best as well. Clearly her boyfriend is doing just fine with <laughs> members of her family. So we wish him of course we wish her the whatever, best. but Kelsey. Kelsey's a hero. Kelsey. God damn, man. Kel- nothing Kel- nothing can hurt her now. She is. She's been through the ringer. Dude, What like top tier human being. Top tier human being. We wish you lovely sex with people who are not interested in your extended family, um, and 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 a and a good life there forward. Um, let's see what else is going on. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. I kind of, this one's kind of interesting. I, I that's the one that I had my eye on too. Yeah, you want to do this one? Yeah. Let's talk to Maddie from Minnesota. Minnesota. Maddie. Maddie. Oh my god, am I on? Oh, you're so on. You are more on than anyone has ever. <laughs> but you are at you're you're on. You're on right you're now. You're on right now. How's it going, Maddie? Well, hi. How are you guys? <sighs> We're two geckos. <laughs> Never better. <laughs> See, the best part of the show is when you um, just forget that you're a gecko. I live on a really That's busy right. street, so if there's like a loud truck or a motorcycle that goes by, I just want to apologize to everyone. Maddie, you have nothing to apologize for. Uh, it says here you're 21 from Minnesota. It also says here that you've been feeling like your friends pity invite you to events and that you feel as though you're a side character in everyone's lives. That's what it says here. Do you want to tell us more about that? Yeah. So for the past like year or so, um, I guess like nobody like I don't know people stopped inviting me to stuff so for like probably like six months I didn't like go anywhere except for work in my house and then I moved to a new city and um I go to school here and I got a job and people at my job I ask them questions about themselves and then that's like the end of the conversation they don't want to talk to me about like what's going on in my life and like my roommates will go off and hang out without me all the time and don't invite me. And I, I feel like I just kind of exist to say semi funny things to people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then like, that's it. Hmm. Do you feel, um, I don't know if any of that made sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, do you feel like uh, what 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 kind of you say when you talk to your coworkers? They're talking mostly about themselves. They don't ask you much about yourself. Is that what you said? Yeah, and like they'll talk about like going to parties and stuff. And oh. like if I'm present, they'll be like, "Oh, you can like come if you want to," and then I'll go, mm-hmm. and nobody talks to me the whole time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. I have a few thoughts about this, Matt. Uh, Maddie. Okay, so aside from like your your like friendships and your sort of personal life, what do you like, and what do you do with your time? Um, 
I guess a lot of the time I just kind of hang out at my house. Um, I watch YouTube a lot. Um, I like playing video games. and I mean, I have a boyfriend, okay. but like none of his friends like live near us. And like every time he's come to visit me here since we're long distance right now. Mm. Um, nobody, like, I'll be like, hey, let's, let's go out for dinner with some of, like, these people that I know. And then the people just, like, cancel on us last minute or they just are like, oh, we're doing something else. So I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so you just feel, you feel like you're getting the short end of the social stick, shall we say. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what? Can can I ask like what would your ideal situation be? Are are you hoping to have like one or two like really close friends? Are you hoping to have like be in a whole group? Like what how how would you sort of describe your ideal uh communal situation? Good question. Well, I mean, in high school I had this big group of friends and we would literally like hang out all day at school and then after school we all go to someone's house and just hang out until like 10 o'clock at night and then rinse and repeat the next day i guess i just missed that mm. I, th so the reason I, I was talking about um like what your interests are outside of just your personal life is because uh i feel like one of the great uh missions in life is to take the big bright universe carve your tiny little piece of it mm. somehow mm. so uh I, I don't know if you're in college are you in college yeah okay perfect uh if, if i were you and this is this is uh I, I was a bit of a loner my freshman year of college and this is how i uh sort of started to build a lot of people around me and have friends and stuff is um very pra i'm gonna give you some very practical shit here you gotta start a club, not join, start mm. a club in relation to your interests, whatever that is. And anything you think is not an interest you can start a club around, you actually can, whether it's uh, video, I know you said you like to play video games, uh, anything else you could possibly think of to start a club and then advertise for the club on like uh, whatever, uh, Let's say you go to the University of Minnesota. You go to the fucking Min University of Minnesota class of 2020 Facebook page. Type in, hey, everybody, we're going to be at the room 209. I'm bringing my Nintendo Switch. Everyone come hang. You know, and I guarantee there's other people on the University of Minnesota Facebook page who are just feeling the same way as you. They'll come show up. Um, I like that. So uh, that's that's sort of the, the way that I always think about the, these kinds of things especially when you're in college because that's a good uh yeah. uh avenue and, that, and that's that's my like practical advice for you because that's something you can really like go and 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 do and put yourself out there like that does that make sense yeah and i think i do i try to put myself out there and like my freshman year of college i was in a single dorm room and I would go, I went up to all the other people on my floor and introduced myself. Mm. And like none of them wanted anything to do with me. I said, because a lot of them knew each other already. So that's a bitch. I think that might also be part of my problem is that like I think people think I want to insert myself into their already established groups. This, so they don't want to like. Well, this is why this is why I'm telling you to start. This is why I'm telling you to start a club because you don't you 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 don't want to insert yourself into a group. You want to form. You want to be the genesis. Yeah. Of a yeah. new group. Yeah. Totally. What do you think, Mark? No, I like that. I mean, I think that's a good advice. I, I um, I also had a little bit of trouble in in college because I all of my friends from high school had left, and so uh, but you know I was in like acting and so that sort of group was already sort of right. there to to welcome me right it was a little bit easier in that regard but um i think uh do what about your boyfriend is he uh, is, is he open to this like sort of um friendship excursion or how does he feel about 
you know, social gatherings and parties and stuff like that? Does he want that like you want that? Or how is, you know, how, what, what are his feelings on that? I think he feels like pretty much the same as me. Like we've had conversations about it before and like mm. it comes up a lot how like you guys are saying, we think we get like the short end of the stick and like everything. Like mm. all of his friends moved to different states. Like I'm three hours away at college. Um, you know, he has a dead end job he doesn't want to be at. And when he's, he's doing, cause he's, he's a student pilot. So he, uh, can only fly when the weather is like good and the weather has yeah. been really bad for the past like four months. So he, he's like in the same boat as me. We just keep like, feeling you know, like we're not like getting what I feel like we deserve. I don't know if that's like entitled or arrogant for me to say, but no. I feel like we, we deserve some people that actually like care about us. 100% everyone does. Everyone deserves to be cared about and have people around them that, that love them and, and support them. I don't think that's not, it's not too much to ask or entitled at all. I think it's just a matter of uh, it seems that you have not run into those people. Um, because if you had, you know what I mean, they would be more, they, they would be happy to include you. I mean, the, the, um, and so I think Lyle's advice is actually really good here in that you may have to just take it upon yourself to find an opening you know like you you make the thing and then and then find people that fall in there those are probably people that you'll you'll get along with see i'm always, I'm always thinking about like uh you know what what can i control what can i control and like mm. r- relationship shit is so hard because yeah. that's like that's it's all 50 50 whether, whether relationship friendship whatever it is it's all 50 50 so there's 50 percent Right. You cannot control. That's but, true. But you can control the amount of effort you put into putting yourself out there and uh, attempting to put yourself in as many situations as possible mm. in which other people are gravitating toward you. And that's why I like this whole start a club thing because not only can you put yourself in a position where people are gravitating toward you, but also you can put yourself in a position where people who are interested in the same things as you are gravitating toward you, which yes. gives it a higher percentage of it being the right people. I mean, what do you, before we go, Maddie, what do you think of that idea? I think it'd be a really good idea. Like, I I don't, I don't know if I'm confident enough in myself that I could actually, like, do it. But See, there, really, okay, all right, there we go. I was about to say, there it's we a little are. scary. It's there we are, it's a little bit scary, it but is. you got to get over that, uh, Maddie. I wish I wish I could send some sort of ray beam of confidence to you uh, to get you there, but I'm yeah. t- you got to get there, Maddie, I'm telling you. I, I, I just want you to be able to like, feel empowered to take control of the situation. Yeah. J- Rem- just, yeah, I'm going to try harder to put myself out there. Yeah, give it a Good. shot because it's really at the end of the day, it's all just people. And we tend to overthink that. We, we, we're we all just stupid people. And, and, and also, we all really are sort of insecure at the core and we really want a connection, love, support, and validation. So you, even the most confident people you know are the people that even ignore you or, or like sort of passively invite you to their parties. They're insecure. They're looking for connection. They're looking for something to, to, yep. to hang on to. So creating a group, not a big leap, something you can absolutely do. Don't think too hard about it. I would say just do it. And, uh, and, and you'll, you'll probably find that some magical shit will happen as, as, as a result. Maddie, is there anything else you want to say to uh, me or Mark at the computer before we go? Um, thank you guys for all this is why I, I definitely feel like more empowered by the end of this. The chat has been really nice too. I've been reading it a little bit. Hey, but good. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Uh, Have a good night, Maddie. Thank you, Maddie. Thanks, you too. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Have you Have you had bed bugs bite you before? Never. I feel like that's it's never happened. <laughs> I just like I just think it's a hilarious turn of phrase. Are bed bugs not, real? Oh yeah, they're real. In New York it's a problem. Really? Uh, a lot of people who, you know, there's there's a big um habit of 
collecting, uh, you know, if you need furniture, there's yeah. a lot of furniture on the street. Oh, but people will take the beds bugs. and take bed, but it's very real, and it'll it'll infect the whole building. Mm-hmm. It'll infest the whole building, I should say. But I've never had them. Very lucky to never have had them. Um, but you don't want to let them bite. I, I feel like you're almost you're like you're kind of like putting. I don't know if you believe in this shit. <laughs> I don't know if I believe in this shit, but like the vibes, you're putting it in, out into the universe. Putting the, the, the yeah, every time bed after Collins, you say don't let the bed bugs bite, you're like putting the, out the vibes of bed bugs, bed bugs <laughs> coming to you. Yeah. Or I don't know, maybe you're saying don't I can let the bed bugs. I can fucking take I them. I think on. you can take them too. Huh? I think you can take them too. Right? They're, uh, I mean, they're, they're fucking bugs. Yeah. You're a giant. Just punch them. I say let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> let them bite. Come to me, Build my up an sweet immunity. bugs. <laughs> yeah. You know, with Maddie's thing, it's uh, dude. It's a. It's a. That's a hard one because like I, I I approach everything from like a. I had a hard time responding. I didn't yeah. really know what to say. I I approach a lot of things from like a weird entrepreneurial thing where I'm like fuck this. I'm taking control of this situation. I mean, it's a I'm good starting instinct. the club. Yeah, that's what I, I and I know that Maddie seems like she ha- might have issues doing that, but yeah, fuck. I wish she didn't. I wish she would go on to the fucking because it's so. If you really like take control of the situation, you can right. meet, you can meet people anywhere. You can go to fucking the middle of Taiwan and you can make a whole bunch of friends if it's you really true, know man. how to take control of the situation. It's true, and that's something that I think probably yeah, you and Maddie are probably quite different in that way. It sounds like she doesn't have that thing in her that is like I know I'll just do you know but how do I yeah I, how, do, how do how do we get that to her? I don't know. I know. I th- well, hopefully she felt it. Hopefully she felt it. I think it's a good instinct. Mm-hmm. I think if she did that, probably um, good things would happen in terms of friendships. Um, but I felt so unqualified to answer because I have always been so lucky in like having friends around me. You, you, you know, know a lot I, of friends? Yeah, I mean, I, not a lot, but I have uh, the ones that I do have are like, real tight real right. close i've been there for a long time okay and i've never had trouble having those people in my life so i just didn't feel qualified to like tell her how to do that i don't know sure. i don't sure. know i've never been in that situation it's hard to build friends from like just fucking scratch that's i imagine it is it's very that's hard sad. yeah i had one time like that when i lived in paris back in the day i moved over there um and was waiting tables and I was very depressed because I had like a couple friends, but I found it super difficult to crack that barrier Mm -hmm. and like, um, yeah, bring people into my life who meant a lot to me. Yeah. And I didn't realize until I was in that situation, how hollow that makes you feel. Um, so I left, (laughs) moved to New York and I had a much easier time, but like, Yes, it's not a luxury for a lot of people. You know, they just have to fucking deal with it. Yeah. And I really don't know what the solution is. I think you, 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 what you suggested is a good one. You just have to, like you said, you have to push past the nervousness, the insecurity, and yeah. just give it a shot. Mm-hmm. Hope it works. You know, else gets hard is like as you become an adult. It's like the. Um the you, you, like making time for your friends because oh I feel like because because when you're in high school it's like all right you you all see each other every day at the stupid bus stop and right. the classrooms and the whatever it is but as you're an adult and you're just like you know you have to actually go out of your way to tech especially if like you're friends with people who are like in different group like you don't like all of your friends aren't in the same group right and you can't just be like okay everybody meet at this place it's like you have to make time for this oh, person it's and dramatically this person, this person. more difficult and there's only seven days in a week time is so much more finite more difficult than we think of it is yeah even today now with friends who i have who are established who i love deeply it's yeah. very difficult to find time for them it's so difficult <sighs> i it's i don't like that i want more time for my relationships and my friends i want more of that um we only have seven days a week we gotta have get hours. gotta make that time though that's super important do you do you waste do you waste a lot of time tons tons of time yes what, yeah. do you, what do you do when you're wasting time i ride my electric well it's not wasted time it really uh, you ride your electric bike my electric unicycle i ride waste. that shit that's around that's not a waste of time at all I, I sit there high and 
play the piano. It's not a waste of time. No, I don't. I love that. Wait a minute. Time. You have an ele- uh, I, I completely glossed over this. You have an electric unicycle. I do. I have an electric. What unicycle. the hell is an electric unicycle? Oh, dude, it's the best thing. It's it's you know the one wheels. Yeah. I'm yeah. So wheels. so it's that. But you're, it's they're much oh, more. Oh, you know, powerful. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're I actually didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah. The wheel, you're going yeah. straight. That's yeah. that. Yeah. They're, um, you ever fuck yourself up on that thing? You ever? I have. I have fucked myself up pretty bad on it. Um, but I'm a lot more careful now. And, uh, dude, honestly, there's no better way to get around New York City. Yeah. I've shipped them here to LA and ridden <laughs> them around because I just love it so much. You can ride with car traffic. You get you can bring it into a restaurant. No yeah. one cares. It's the size of like a briefcase. They go forty miles an hour. It's it's the best. I'd only learn it if you want to learn it, and if you're okay with possibly being hurt a few times. But if you're okay with that learning process, it really is like. To me, it's the future, but I don't think it'll ever be beyond a niche thing because it's hard to learn. Well, you, well know? you know, you know the concept of minimalism. Oh yeah, I feel like the the unicycle. That's the minimalist. That's the minimalist of form of transportation. For I sure. only need one wheel. That's <laughs> a single wheel will do a me. A single wheel will do. Single wheel is my way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the car, four wheels. What does society come this to? We need four so, We need assholes. so much stuff. Look at these quad-wheeled assholes. All these wheels. <laughs> Our capitalistic society is... I'm a uni-wheel man. Always have been, always will be. How are you feeling uh, stamina-wise? I know it's kind of been a while. I don't want to... You know, I'm down to keep taking calls for as saying, long as you're down. I don't, don't want to keep... You know, I don't know what your energy levels are like. I'm chilling. I'm 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 starting to get a little tired, but I could yeah. definitely take one or two more. Okay, let's do it. Let's take, take a couple let's, more? Take a couple more. Let's do it. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's see what's going on on the computer. That There's a couple great. that I saw. It's been a big um, day for me, but I'm really enjoying this. It's nice to... Uh, Nice to talk to people. Yeah, man. It's uh, once again. Thank you for coming on the show, man. It's, Dude, uh, thanks it's for always, having me. It's fun to do this with another person. It's yeah, like, good because I'm I'm always in my own head about shit. It's nice to have another perspective. Oh hell yeah! I mean, I agree. It's nice to bounce off each other and think about things for people and with people. It's just nice. It's humanity. We we. It's like I feel like when we're doing this, we have. It's like the same dynamic as. Meeting someone at a bar yeah. and having like a serious conversation about it is. something. It is. You know, or a not so serious conversation. But either way, like having like a concentrated conversation about any old thing. I enjoy it. Let's, let's, Jess. let's keep the heavy train rolling. Jess. Dude. Jess. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Hey, guys. Jess. Hey, pretty good. Hello. Hey. Jess, forty from Minnesota. How's it going? It's pretty great. We're having our first thunderstorm of the year, and it's a pretty cool night out. So can't complain. How are you guys? I like that you look at a thunderstorm as a good thing. I, I, nice I, you thing. can tell a lot about a person from that. Just a little bit. Yeah, thank you. It's kind of that awesome mix of like excitement and. A little bit of fear, you know? So, yeah. What are you Goodbye. afraid of, Jess? What's that? What are you afraid of? Oh, you know, the occasional tornado or hail. Weather um, stuff, mostly. Mostly meteorological events. <laughs> weather stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Lord will keep us yeah. safe, Jess. But listen, <laughs> it says here... You've been divorced for seven years, uh, but you're still in love Correct. with your ex-husband? Yeah, I think so. And I was just wondering if that's, I guess, first of all, normal. And then secondly, what to do with that um, it's kind of strange position to be in, I guess. And also, like, curious if some of the listeners have been in this situation and how it works out for them. Is this a feeling that has cropped up for you before? Is this a new thing? Um, I'd say this has been um, easily over two years. Wow. Yeah. Mm, Wow. (laughs) Wait, so you've been divorced for seven years, but you only started falling back in love with him 
for the best two. What happened? Well, I guess to be honest, like, um, you know, he had other relationships and I had other relationships and the timing never seemed to work out right. Mm. And then I just, Sometimes after, like, enough time has passed, like it's been seven years, I think back to why we got divorced in the first place, and it seemed mm. really, it just seems silly now. And I wish I would have done it differently, I guess. Have you articulated this to him? Yeah. Um, no, I haven't. Oh. Mainly because he's, He's been in a relationship for several years, and that ah. relationship ended last November. Oh. And uh, okay. so I guess out of respect for that relationship, I did not want to say anything about how I've been feeling. And since it's ended now... Um, it's over. It's been four I'm months. A little confused. What? I mean, listen, you clearly have a long and storied history with this person. I feel like it's not completely out of the blue yeah. for you to uh, approach him with, uh, you know, talking about these things. Together. Lay it on him. Lay it on him. Yeah. We what are you waiting for? Yeah. Get it out. Get it out there and get it on him and see what he thinks. Because that way, you know, if he doesn't feel the same way, it'll save you the pain and the, you know, this sort of what, this what if. And if he does feel the same way, then sweet goddamn Jesus. There you go. Yeah, I just, it feels a little safe in this unassuredness right now. Like, I'm worried if I do tell him and he says no, then it'll be just heartbreaking, you know? Uh, but, 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 but Jess, uh, there's, uh, there's just as much safety in knowing than there is in not knowing. Because, listen, let's say you, uh, uh, let's say you, you drop your feelings on this man. And he reciprocates them, then great. You fall in love. Uh, you tell the kids you're back together. You right. all go out for ice cream. Blah, blah, blah. But if <laughs> yeah. if he doesn't, then okay, you tried, and that's what matters: is that you tried. You went through your life telling people how you felt about them. You lived with your heart open, and now uh, you know that that avenue is is closed. And with that knowledge, you are free and empowered to. Move about the universe in search of other options for you to find love and happiness. Yeah, I like that idea. Mm. I was about to echo Lyle's sentiments exactly, which is that, you know, it you may feel safe not knowing, but I think you'll feel even safer knowing one way or the other. You know, this is something that only life can give you the answer. You 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 can spend your you, you can spend your, these nights sort of hypothesizing and uh, feeling a certain kind mm -hmm. of comfort in that, but it's not it's not the real comfort. The real comfort happens when you know. You know what I mean? That's 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 the good shit. I think you really got to put it out there. You're, yeah. You know, you'll you'll be pleased either yeah, way. It's probably not healthy to hang out in this gray, you know. Yeah, not not the most healthy. I mean, it's fine, you know. I don't know if it's particularly unhealthy, but it certainly would um, bring you peace in either direction. Right. You know? It's peace in either direction. Good peace, bad peace, but the bad peace turns into good peace. It's all good peace at the end. You know, you just... Uh, but you got to find out. You got to find out. And do you think it's been an appropriate amount of time since his last relationship ended? or Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel I like, what, four months? Kind of Probably more than four months. My math things. is bad. Yeah. Probably, yeah, it's like four months. Four months? I think four months is... Yeah. Yeah. More than enough time. More than enough time. And uh, you are also, you know, I think, can sense a, a good person for even thinking about that. You know, thinking about his space and his time um, rather than just jumping on it. Um, I think he'll appreciate that. And it also speaks to your, you know, your empathy and your, your consideration. Um, I just want to say one last thing to you, Jess. Um, I just, like, you should be prepared. Like, I think you should go for it. Say your piece. But just, like, be prepared to accept 
whatever the answer is and yeah. not to spend too much time dwelling on it. Yeah. Because you still got a lot of life in you. You got your kids. You got the infinite adventures of the whole universe to explore. So just try not to dwell too much on whatever the answer is, if that sounds reasonable to you. Yeah, it definitely does. It's important for me to keep that in mind, too. So I appreciate you affirming that. That means a lot. Man, that's so true. That's so true. It has nothing to do with, with, with you at the end of the day. You know what I mean? It's like if he feels that way about you, he does. If not, it's not your fault. You know, it's like, but, but you deserve to know that answer and um, carry on whatever that answer ends up being. Yeah. You know? Is there anything else you want to say and to... Uh, maybe it was just to bring two, two beautiful children into the world, you know? I think hey. that, you know what? You know what? That's a good prerogative. Yes. That's a lot. If that was, like, all you ever did, that's, that's a, a lot. It's an incredible yeah. accomplishment. Yeah, that's, that's a, a lot beautiful to, thing. To bring in life. Um, but, Jess, is there anything that you want to say to me or Mark or the people at the computer before we go? Uh, just... Thanks, thanks for the show. I've been a long-time listener for a yeah. caller. Uh, I always wanted to say that. And, yeah. yeah. It's fun thing to say. Love you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate I know you started right at the beginning of COVID, and I appreciate the role you've played in sort of helping people through that, through this resource. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Jess. Appreciate you. You have a good rest of the night. All right. Night, guys. Bye, Jess. Oh, what a sweetie. Ah, <sighs> what a sweetie, man! That's a tough thing, huh? I know it is. I, I, I'm excited for her. I'm excited for the uh, the answer. The you answer. know, it's well because the answer, no matter no matter what, it's we're, we're, we're it's good to have the answer. It is. That's it. That's because exactly now it. because then you're like okay, either if it's a yes, then we'll embark on the beautiful love story of the thing, and right. then if it's not. Then we embark on the journey of whatever Her else is going on. Th- yeah. Her beautiful thing, yes, the journey inward. Right, right, yeah. This yeah. is I, this is like a, I feel like we've been talking a lot about. This is I think this has been a relationship heavy, heavy stream. Is heavy there any uh, Mark? Do you feel like there's a and we can think about it for a second? Do you feel like there is any sort of underlying theme that's been prevalent in in the majority of the calls tonight? It, you know, I think what it is, at least in the less, well, yeah, generally it's this feeling of um, unsure about what other people will think. Sure, yeah. The yeah. friendship, the yeah. relationship, yeah. the, it's trepidation. It's yeah. like um, anxiety over, and I think it's a problem that a lot of people have now is probably yeah. why such a large sample size is, is that sort of thing is like, I just don't know what other people will think about this. Yeah. That sucks because like that's robbing it's it's like um almost like a confidence thief. Mm. It's like you it I I always hope that people feel good about enough about themselves yeah. to you know, bring that sort of stuff to the table. You should yeah. feel good enough ab- ab- about yourself. And if you don't, that sucks. You should feel better about yourself. You know, you should. Because you, there, there, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, it's, it's, it's all about how you perceive yourself. There's nothing inherently wrong with you. I heard this quote, someone said this, you belong in every room. Whatever room Man, you're in, you belong great. in every you belong in every room. I love that. There ain't no room out there you don't belong in. I love that. I like that too. I remember I heard, that's not mine. I heard that from uh, from someone. It's but so true. It's so true. If there's anything anything that I could relate to it with in my in my current life, yeah. it would be like the imposter syndrome that I had and of still course, have. Of course. Um, for such a long time, of like, I don't belong in this job. Of course. I what I make is bullshit. What the people I look up to make is great. Yep. I don't know why they're entertaining me or talking to me. I feel like I need to prove something mm-hmm. here. None of that is true. Mm-hmm. It's, a fabrication. it's a fabrication. They like you because they like you. There's no catch. You know, you are worth it. You are worth it. And 
Um, and 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 anyone out there that pays you a, a, a bit of mind thinks you're worth it too. And you just got to know that. You know, you 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 got to walk the earth knowing that that you are valuable. Um, I can't impress that enough. It's so important, dude, because so many people feel like they're not. And you are. You are. Man, it's uh this is it's weird. Maybe this is uh you know, we were we were both talking about being single for a while. It's like um relationships, whether they're romantic or just with friends or with family or whatever it is, it's like in your head you're all like there's, there's so many people are just like fucking weird and they have all their weird stuff and it's like it's enough to like figure out your own weird stuff yeah. and then you bring another person in and you have <laughs> yeah. their weird stuff in relationship with your weird stuff and then you bring a third person and then you bring your grandpa in <laughs> yeah and you have to figure out his weird stuff <laughs> yeah that's always tough um, everyone knows what that's like <laughs> do you you want it how are you feeling about let's find one a final, final call, call let's take a finale to bring us in sounds great um before we do that let's let's check in with the chat one more time oh yeah last, absolutely. last, last time with the chat I'm Mark sure makes that. me want to move to New York. Are you saying that so you can stalk him? <laughs> First of all, you should move to New York. You you definitely should. If we you were have that we itch. were talking about this a little bit beforehand. You I re- I really want to move to New York at some point. It's the best place. I it's, really want to move there, but all the like, we were also talking about this. All the like, all the all the in the the, the industry. Yep. Yeah, the in, industry. Yeah, the whole industry is, is here. Is in Los Angeles. The entire entertainment industry is here for the most part. I mean, there's some in New York, but it's, you know, 99% of the entertainment industry is here. And it's a bummer because, not because LA sucks. I love LA. We were talking about this too. I really have learned to love LA. It's a great city. But if we're talking objectively about the cities. Yeah. New York is better. It's oh, yeah. a better city. Every time I get in my car, I, 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 every time I get in my car, I'm like, I'm either gonna die or I'm gonna kill somebody. <laughs> that happens every time I get in my car. Yeah, I, I have that thought every time I get in my car. I'm like, now, wouldn't it be great if you could have that thought at another person's face? <laughs> That's what it is. You can just you get it out, and yeah. then it's done. We all love each other. We're all on the same level. We're yeah. on the street. Get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Thank you very much, and 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 everything is within five minutes of you. Mm-hmm. You don't. You walk outside; the whole world is right there. Mm-hmm. It's just a better design city. That's all I'm saying. The, and another thing is with the cars, you can't get drunk and drive a car. No, you shouldn't get high and drive a car. But on the subway, I mean, you can do PCP and ride the subway, and you're fine. Hundred percent. Yep, you sure can. You could you could do some PCP on the subway. You could do what yeah whatever the bath salts. Do people still bath? I feel like bath salts are like they're very like 2012. Yeah, I feel like they're. I haven't heard they're anything about them. They're falling out of fashion. They're falling out of fashion. <laughs> but I'm sure there's some some, some people still doing them. Uh, we had a big old shooting on the subway this morning. In oh, fact, oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, man, not good, not, not good. good. Also, Gilbert Gottfried, legendary New Yorker, dead. Oh, he was a New York guy. Yeah, man, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Man, he died when he he, uh, he was sixty seven. Too young. Life is young. really not that long. It's really not. It's really not that long. That's why you have got to tell people that you love them. See if they love you back. Just say it. It's too short. It's too. Sh- it's also too short not to try some PCP if That's you have the right. opportunity. If you feel like it. If it's in your bingo card. <laughs> Hit that shit. Someone said my hobby is being a broke New Yorker. We're go we're doing mushrooms and going to Times Square. That sounds oh. sick. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, I don't know if I would. I probably choose. Yeah, Times Square would be fun on shrimps. It would on be. Shrimps? It would be. I've never I, done shrimps. It's fun. Okay. It's fun. Uh, I haven't done them in some time, except for like a little bit, like a little micro dose. You know, oh, okay. people give have given me a little micro dose. People are talking. I, I hear a lot of people talking about the micro dose. It's fine. It's sort of more. I would just rather get high, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you do a lot of shrimps. It's fun. It's a good time. But you got to be prepared for like, like eight hours of that. It's okay. like a. It's a whole thing. It's a whole day. Okay. Um, but I would go to Times Square on shrimps. It'd be fun for a second, as long as I could get out. I gotta, gotta get out. I gotta. I gotta try that. 
Uh, I've never you done. Should. I've never done. I've never done it before. Have you done um, like Molly or Acid? I've or done anything? Ecstasy. Oh, okay, once, Ecstasy. But never. Uh, would you, would you, have you done Ecstasy? Yeah, yeah. Are they are they in any way, shape, or form similar? Um, I mean, not really. No, no, they're different feelings. Molly is what I would suggest. Are they the same? Is Molly and True Ecstasy are the different, right? Yeah, Ecstasy is usually Molly cut with an upper. It's like, well, Molly, oh, okay. MDMA is an upper, but it's cut with another upper. It's like Ecstasy would be like Molly and Coke or like Molly and Speed or something. All I remember from Ecstasy, what I remember from Ecstasy is that uh, I remember trying to make myself sad just to like see if I could, and I couldn't do it. Oh, like, yeah. That's... Something happens in your brain where you literally can't be sad. Yeah, you had some good shit. That's, yeah. that, that's, that's what it is. And Molly is like that, but even more, it's like the pure version of that, I guess. Yeah. You may have just had Molly, honestly. Maybe. But it's, it's like four hours. It's less than shrooms and acid. It's a, it's a shorter trip, three or four hours. And it's just a, a surge mm. of... <sighs> right. Oh man, this is really good. Yeah. Oh, this is really nice. This is a good impression of somebody on mine. Yeah, I've done it a few times. <laughs> I've done it a few times. You guys, I can like recall it. You know what I mean? It's just like this. Mm, even the sound of you going mm, is really nice. It's like the vibration yeah. on the palate. Every little thing feels good. When you look That's out like, into the crowd and you're doing your show, yeah. What percentage of people? do you think are on drugs oh you know i was just about to say it's actually not dissimilar to that feeling hmm. looking at if i'm having a good show yeah oh, and really? the audience is good it's very similar to that do you think do you think a strong portion of the the people in your audience are on drugs i would assume a good percentage yeah. i don't know if it's a majority i would say probably a majority are like drunk okay sure. but i would say I would wager wager 20 to 25 percent at least that's at a healthy least. wager I would wager that that's a healthy wager. or fucked up on something you know? I kind of I just like secretly like hope that people who are seeing me are like oh Garrett so you, you kind of hope that because you're like okay that my bar is a little bit lower here <laughs> they'll in, yeah it's it, it, these people will be easier to entertain right that's true it's true and I guarantee you uh, I would say there's got to be at least thirty to forty percent of people that are watching this that are uh, for me. Oh, fucked oh, up oh, in oh, some way. Oh, I was talking way. about for a live thing. Oh, on this right now. Oh yeah, we could do a poll even. Who's who's fucked up in some way? To, who? Someone just took. <laughs> oh, someone took a three hundred milligram edible before my DC show. See, there you go. That's a good. That's a good audience member. Who's fucked up? Anyone fucked up in any way? High, drunk. I'm high. Yep, stone drunk. <laughs> Someone says they're fucked up on cum. <laughs> Someone's fucked up on cum right now. My son said I just took a bong rip. High, but drunk. I'm about to take another dab. I haven't done a dab in a while. I miss yeah, those. Me too. It's been a hot second. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did did it, pretty much everyone in the chat is stoned so drunk. Someone said they ecstasy at your show in Chattanooga. Hey. Ibuprofen, that doesn't sound safe at all. <laughs> Guys, don't rail ibuprofen. It's not a good Listen, thing. at the end of the day, with therapy, Gecko says don't do drugs. Let's do it. Let's bring it on home. Let's Let's bring take, it on home, Mark. Let's bring her on home. See what's huh? going on. We're going to take one last call for the people here. You know what we could, you know, honestly, you know what we could do? Mm. These are all calls that have been screened. We could just take, sometimes Ooh, we could take just, a take, we just take one that hasn't been screened. I'd love to take a random call. Let's take a random call. That sounds great. Let's take something in the queue. Hello? Hello? Hi. How's it going? It's going good. How are you? Dude, I'm doing wonderful. How are you, man? I like this guy. This was a good decision. That's a good attitude. I like the. I like it. Was, uh, tell us about that day. How's your day been, huh? Dude, my day's been actually great, bro. And wait, hold on. Am I actually on with the Gek right now? You are on with two Gex. <laughs> two Gex. Two gags are better than one. Double prizes <laughs> well, for this amazing. man. Double gag, baby. DVDA. You know how it is. What's your name, homie? My name is Kyle Goodrich, man. 
Oh, we got a first a, and a last name. We're double prizes for both of us. Uh, did you, did you say Kyle Goodness? Good. Uh, okay, yeah. So good, rich, like the tire. But <laughs> oh, I thought you said goodness, like <laughs> I'm not wealthy. <laughs> that would be a sick last Kyle name. Kyle Goodness, gracious. How do you do? <laughs> Kyle Goodness. That's the name of yeah, a superhero that no. does good deeds. You mind if we call you Kyle Goodness, Kyle? Just living in the fantasy that that's your name. I'd like to keep no, you're welcome to call me whatever you want, man. Hell yeah. Well, listen, Dan. What's going on with you? Uh, with me, you know, life's been going great. Uh, I've, been, I've been putting in extra effort at work. I got a promotion, you oh, know. Wow. Things are going good, man. Congratulations. Respect. Is it a big promotion? Is it a promotion that comes with perks, benefits, and that and the like? Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't really come with that many perks or benefits, but it's a promotion that gets me closer to my goals. So, yeah. And what and what are your goals, Kyle? Uh, well, obviously, to to make more money in the long run, but uh, you know. To be able to have more time at home and spend with my friends and family and help everybody else around me if they need it. Good attitude on this guy. Good right? attitude. I love it. What are your thoughts on life, my friend? Tell us about your your general life philosophy. How do you go about your life? How do I go about my life? Ooh, that's that's a heavy hitter. That's a real heavy hitter. Um. <laughs> Well, I wake up, I procrastinate most things, and then mm -hmm. I go to work and I try to do the best that I can without ripping someone's face off. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come back home, take a shower, drink a, you know, a white claw or two, and fucking go to bed, man. God, damn. I love this guy. I love it. Simple, effective, well-meaning. You're not, you're not harming anybody. You're just doing good. This is how all advice call in. Sh no. shows should go <laughs> is it should just be people who are very happy with absolutely no problems <laughs> calling in yeah every time hey man <laughs> everything's good everything's pretty good here <laughs> <laughs> it's just person after person calling in to tell us about how great everything's going <laughs> not a single problem to be found. I mean, I, you know, Kyle, I don't want to put that on you, Kyle. I mean, do, is is and is anything at all going wrong? I mean, yeah, of course. There's stuff that's going wrong, you know, but if you just focus on the stuff that's going wrong, like you're not you're just gonna dwell on that and you're not gonna get anywhere, right? So See that's the truth. That shit, keep to yourself and uh keep going, you know? Right, because there's always, however, it doesn't matter how, uh, whatever rich and whatever great your life is. None always, of that matters if, at all. If you're, if you're looking for something wrong, you'll find it. There will always be bullshit yeah. in your life. What's your relationship like with your father, Kyle? My father, yeah. So my father wasn't really around much of my childhood. Hmm. Um, kind of a crazy story there. You know, he used to write me letters, but then my mom would always hide them. And so I didn't get to see them until I turned 18. And then when I was 18, he accused me of sleeping with his wife that I had never met. And I had to tell Whoa. him no, you know, and then it turned into like this whole crazy thing. It's actually wild, man. I, I asked the right question. You really did. Do you get so I'm assuming you don't talk. You don't, you don't keep up with him anymore. No, I do. I do. Oh. Because like once I as time passed. You know, like I got the full story, but yeah, when it happened originally, I was like, bro, I don't know what's happening right now. Wow. So he was writing you letters that you never saw. Yeah, he would write me letters and he would write my mom letters. And then uh, my mom would just hold the letters and I never got to see him until I was older, like 17, 18 years old. Oh my God! What what was what was the contents of these letters? The letters were mostly just about like how much he missed my mom and wished that he would have done things differently. Mm. And then on like the side note would be about how much he wished he could be more a part of my life. Wow! Uh, yeah, and I mean that's pretty much it. Oh man, that's heavy, man. How did that make you feel when you saw those letters after all that time? Dude, I cried. I cried a lot. Mm. I cried a lot, yeah. Mm. 
Well, I'm glad you've reconnected with him in some way, even though that, I mean, it sounds like the reconnection part at first was a little rocky with the accusing you of having slept with his wife and shit. That's kind of, that's a lot. So he wrote you these heartfelt letters about how he misses you and he misses your mom. And then after the fact, started accusing you of sleeping with his wife. Yes. So. Something's going on there. All right. You okay? No, I'm trying to be really positive, but you guys are striking like all of the right notes. So I don't know how deep you really want me to go. <laughs> go into the deep end, my friend. Okay, okay, I'll go into the deep end. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? As deep as you want to go, my friend. I've got my snorkel. You can't. Go, you know what? You can't really go okay. that deep with us. No, right, I'm on the <laughs> Yeah, I was okay. No, no, get ready. I was in middle yes. school. This is Salem, Oregon. My mom was a drug lord. We got notified three days ahead of hand that we were going to get raided. So my mom cleaned house and got busted. I go to school the next day to find my dad sitting in a room with a bunch of cops at my school that he was nowhere near only to find out that I was no longer going to be living with my mom, no longer going to this school, and I was going to be living with my dad now that I hadn't seen in years, and uh, his girlfriend, and that's how the whole thing came up with, like, once I turned 18 years old, he didn't, I don't want to say accused, maybe that was the wrong word, but he, he asked me if... I slept with his wife because he wanted to prosecute her with, like, you know, sleeping with a minor. And, Jesus. nah, man, I don't, that ever happened. <laughs> and so that caught me way off guard and was just a wild show. My God. It's kind of crazy how close we came to having this call without you telling us all that. <laughs> yeah, to just being like, all right, Kyle, well, <laughs> life is good and life is fun. Thank you. We, we, yeah. we were very close to having just a <laughs> extremely surface level picture <laughs> yeah. of who you are and what has happened to you in your life. Um, Mom, a drug lord, dad coming in, take you after ne- having nah, not man. seen, God damn. Damn. Nope. So, I nope. mean, this this is, yeah, this is a crazy... No, this is not a story that most people know at all. Really? You don't and, tell uh, people I this? I try to stay positive about you, you, everything. You don't, you don't, you, not a lot of people in your personal life know this about you? Um, my ex-wife uh, and maybe two or three other people. Would you say that this experience or this series of experiences has um, shaped your positivity, your positive outlook on life? Uh, Yes, I think it has. Um, Or has it made it more difficult? It's not always easy to stay positive. I'm not Mm. not trying to, like, put on a show or anything, but, again, Mm. like I said earlier, you can always find negative things to complain about um, and really you. If you can try to be positive, you're going to see more positive things around you rather than like when you're in that negative headspace, all you're going to see is the negative things around you. Yeah, that's it's true, man. It's true. I've always said that or thought it at least is that it's like it. It's an effort like it is work yeah. to find joy oh, for sure. It's work. Yeah. But you really do have to do it if you want to, you know, I mean, if you want to go through this life with anything but, you know, weird ass misery, you really have to work towards the positive. It's 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 a job. It's a job. Weird yeah. ass misery sounds it's like exact, it sounds like a feeling that a lot of people are. Yeah, I still try. It's that gray. Yeah. That unknown sadness that is just there that's if you that's what melancholy is if you had to define melancholy the yeah. word yeah weird ass misery weird ass misery <laughs> so yeah. so kyle do you still do you still talk it's crazy i feel like i uh, forgive me if you said this already we've sort of gone already on a lot of different routes here but do you still talk to your mom and your dad 
Uh, yeah, I do still talk to my mom. Obviously, I mean, I lived with my mom for 99% of my experience kind of growing up as a kid. Mm. Uh, my dad kind of came in later half in life. And then once I got to sit alone in a room and think about like what really happened in life, I, I realized that my mom kind of brainwashed me to view my dad as a negative way, but I never mm. really got to view my dad in my own way and so yeah, once i yeah. really sat aside especially as i grew older i started to realize like nah he was just doing his own thing yep. things happened in life and he chose a different path that wasn't with my mom and that's okay even though it hurt it's okay mm. that's a very wise thing yeah your yeah when you're young i mean you're especially if you're young and your parents are, like going through a thing your mom or your dad, your 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 mom is going to have a, a pretty uh, a big influence over how you view your dad because if she's telling you a bunch of shit about mm. how you should be feeling about your dad and you're young and you're impressionable of, of course yeah, because it's your mom like, like of course time. you're going to believe whatever she says and then I I, I I can kind of see the feeling of like getting a little bit older and going oh shit I actually now that I'm a little bit more of an adult I can go and sort of gather this information independently. And yeah, that's form my opinion independently. Totally. Yeah, that's it's like I hear this from oh, people yeah, for sure. all the time. It's like as you grow older, you realize you just come to the realization that your parents, just like you, are flawed, broken people. Oh yeah. And like that's just it. We all are. We are all flawed, broken people. But we have this thing where, as children, we expect parents to be this beacon of maturity and wisdom. And, you know, and it's just not the case. We're all large children. And, uh, and we have to love each other despite that. And because of it, I don't know, some bullshit like and that. And it's easier said than done. But, you it, know, if, yeah. if we can try, then that's what matters. Yeah, you got a good head on your shoulders, Cal. Yeah, Kyle, you really uh this has really been a great one to top it off with, I feel. Sure like. has. I feel like wait, like there was like layers and yeah. layers to there's a lot of layers to it. It's Kyle. true. It sort of encompasses all of the <laughs> things we've been talking about. Yeah, it really about. does. It really does. You know? Yeah. Things to come to terms with. Yep. Uh, you know, broken sort of family lives yep. that then are healed. Mm -hmm. In their brokenness, mm -hmm. understanding that humans are humans, taking action, finding things out for yourself, yep. all of that shit. Yep. You've done all of that, Kyle. You're a good dude. You're a good dude. I'm so I'm so happy Thank that you've been you able to find I, peace, I, I, Kyle. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, man. I'm inspired by the peace you've been able to find. I hope that the other I, and for any other caller, any other of the people who've called in who are like dealing with some shit where maybe we didn't even have an answer for them or anything like i guess i guess we can look at kyle as like look whatever fucking crazy thing has happened to you <laughs> there's peace to be found find a smile in there somewhere find a little smile in there kyle is there anything you want to say to the people at the computer or to me or to mark or to the or to god before we go he's listening I just want to say thanks, guys. I just want to say thanks for taking my call and listening to my brief but uh, very surface-level uh, abbreviation of my story that's called life. We all have a life that's uh, just as vivid as my own, so I know I'm not alone, and neither are you. Carry on, guys. You can make it. Couldn't have possibly said it better. Kyle Goodness, you're a hero. <laughs> Take care, man. Thank you. Thank God, goodness, you. everybody. Give it give it up. <laughs> Man, what a great Perfect. call to end up. It started off innocuous. Yeah. And then we dug a little bit deep. That's how it is with everybody, though, isn't it? Yeah, dude. It's like you're like, hey, how are you, man? I'm great. I'm great. And then, but everyone yep. has that. Yeah, I think about that all the time when I'm like looking at someone. I'm like, what is, what is your you? shit? What is your shit? <laughs> yeah. Everyone has it. Everyone's got it. Everyone's got it. So, but sometimes, like, I don't know, like, I'll, like, I'll, like I'm like ordering ice cream from the ice cream guy. And I'm like, what is this? Tell me more about it. Maybe that's like that's part, part of what's drawing me calling. into doing this. Right. This is your call. Right. Is to figure that out from yeah, people. Yeah. I think I fucking think about it all the time. That's there's a, you. There's a word for this. I think. What's the word? There's a word. It's on, Have you ever seen this? Um, Empathy, I believe, is the word. No. Okay. I don't, it, it, there's this w word where it's like 
the realization that every single person is living oh. their unique life. Sonder, is that the word? Sonder, right. It's like the it's yeah, it's like the realization that of everything. Yeah. Of of the the inherent beauty and complexity of life and everything. Yeah. 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 Sonder, yeah. 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 That was a very Reddit thing. That was a very, was Reddit, a very Reddit word. Thing. I feel like there's a subreddit for it even. R slash Sonder? Yeah, I think so. You okay, so when you were going like uh pop it off on Reddit and shit, yeah. what was what was the sub that showed you the most love? Videos. R slash videos. Yeah, they would always post me and and uh I think a, a lot of people got sick of it though too. They were like, Who's what shill is posting this guy again? But it was just random people that were posting <laughs> me, showing me a little bit of love, and I appreciate all of you did that. It uh now I'm sitting here with Therapy Gecko and tour in the world and I, life is good and I thank the internet I have the internet to thank pretty much exclusively for that it's true is there anything that uh, you want to either plug or say or to the people of the universe before we get out of here well I don't know if I really want to plug I already plugged some shit and I don't really like advertising stuff so okay, you can say, plug th- thoughts you can thoughts. plug um Feelings. I, I don't know if I could say it really any better than Kyle Goodness said it, and and it's really just um, you must above all try and find love and joy in your life, and 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 try and do that by giving it to the people around you, giving it to yourself, and um and 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 try and do you know. That that's the exercise. Mm. It's not money or success. It's finding little pieces of joy. Yeah, that is the thing. We will all die very soon. Very soon. So just get that good stuff inside of this part of your body, and then we're then you'll die, and you'll have more of that than the tragic shit. And that, that it's the balance that's mm-hmm. more towards that than the other stuff that's going to make you. It was a very long-winded way of no, saying just I, try and find happy moments. Try that's and find really happy moments it. right now. No, it's, it's, a re- it's a very relevant thing what you're talking about because we're always, always trying to find happiness. and It's tomo- a hard thing to tomorrow, find. Tomorrow, where we're trying to find it yesterday. Right. We're trying to find it once we're... Yeah, we regret that we didn't Once we, we live didn't in find whatever. It, or maybe we should find it. Or how do I find it over there? Or why didn't I find it back there? None of that bullshit matters. The 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 future yep. literally doesn't exist. Nope. The it really past, doesn't. It already happened. The only thing that actually exists is you and I yes. sitting here yep. right now yep. and all of you right there watching this happen. Yep. So take a big deep breath and find a little bit of joy just right now just a nice just a Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Mark Rebier. Lyle. What a goddamn pleasure. What a goddamn pleasure it has <laughs> hey. been indeed. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for having me.